Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, it's Warhammer, and that must mean it's time for another episode of Warhammer Weekly. Here with a very special Christmas episode. Happy holidays, everybody, whatever you celebrate anywhere in the world. That's right. We've all been given a great gift here, as we knew it would be this week. We knew we would all get to unwrap something special for Christmas from Games Workshop, and my oh my do we with the new Battle Scroll. I guess that's what we're calling it. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, and the FAQ. Tom's just going to watch other television shows while the show's going on. That's fine. No issue, Tom. I get it. Just fill, fill, fill in airtime. Just got to gotta multitask. <laughs> Such a millennial, Tom. Also joining us this week are the two people who have co-hosted this show with me for the past six years. They've been here every episode, both of them. It's great. First up, Tom, how you doing, brother? Hello, friends. Merry uh, Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Tom. Good to have you back. Uh, Tyler, how was how you doing? Yeah, man. Good to see everybody. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. I hope nice, everybody's nice, uh, in the holiday spirit. Uh, I couldn't find my, my stocking hat. I looked. Didn't, didn't want to make a Walmart run. No, my, my wife was like, don't forget. She told me multiple times. Not She, she made me remember to get this. Yeah. Uh, so... I would say, gentlemen, that Santa definitely came down the chimney here with this Battle Score release, which is going to be our main topic today. It's but so I, exciting. I think some some people got some gifts. I think we got we we did get some gifts. Maybe not exactly the gifts we wanted. And uh, yep. some people got some coal. And we're going to figure out exactly which <laughs> is which. We'll we'll, uh, we'll determine it as we go. But first mm. off, the news because there is news. Yeah, I mean, where do I start, right? <laughs> um, where do you start, Tom? Uh, where do I start, indeed? Uh, so, no rumor engine. Uh, I'm super disappointed about that. Um, yeah, right? uh, just real quick. I said this before we were off air, but I'll repeat it on, on air because I'm, I'm not at all shy about it. It's fine. The advent calendar thing could not be more of a disappointment to me. I couldn't care less about it. It's not like last year we were getting all sorts of cool Curse City reveals and stuff like that. If you remember, Tom, when we were like putting together the Witch yep. Hunter from the various pieces and stuff. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This year it's just like it's it's basically flip a coin. Are we getting the gun or boot of a new Eldar model or the bejangle or weapon of a new Chaos model? That's it. Yeah. 25 <laughs> days of that. Fantastic. Great. I like... Please release these 40k armies so we can stop with this nonsense. <laughs> Everybody like three, knows it's coming. <laughs> Three-fourths of our shows this year have been, yeah, it's a 40k thing. Let's move on. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, it's just like, we get it. You're going to make an Eldar and Chaos box set. We're all really excited about it. I mean, I, I look, I think it's going to be a cool box set. Don't get me wrong. Like, I yeah. I do think new Eldar sculpts will be really cool. I love new Chaos dudes because I steal a lot of Chaos 40k guys and use them in AOS. I think they basically come over often just fine. Uh, so like, I'm, I'm excited about it. I just don't care enough to see a, <laughs> a one square centimeter of the model every day. Just show the box. So yeah. maybe they'll do that on Christmas day. I guess we'll see. That would truly be a Christmas miracle. All right. What mm -hmm. else we got? Um, I mean, as much as everybody is excited about this FAQ, uh, I mean, well, I'll do the FAQ first. Hey, we got an FAQ this week. That's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> That's right. That'll be our main topic. So we're not going to dive into it here. But yep. stay tuned. Uh, I'm not going to bury the. I'm not going to bury the lead though. I really think the real Christmas gift this week was that Cursed City's returning. I mean, come on now. Look, mm. look. Who saw that coming? I no, did not see that. Not me. Okay. No. Merry Christmas to everybody. Like with ex with expansions too. With expansions, like it's back. Yeah. Res, this only continues my ongoing conspiracy theory that GW is doing all of their releases in a meta way. Okay? Like that they yeah. have this stacked meta plan. Like ev the Nurgle released the pipe burst and sewage flooded everywhere, right? Like we went all yeah. the way back. Yeah. Okay? We did how showed how all of them were meta releases. And mm -hmm. now, Curse City, which is about undead, resurrected, yep. ri risen like the beginning of Altered Beast, rise from your graves. Boom, and it's up. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think that's super cool. Uh, I wonder if they'll take a chance to 
do anything different or if they'll just literally reprint it. I don't know. Guess we'll see. Mm. I don't know. But it's exciting. I'm excited. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that that's great. I hope a lot of people who wanted to get their hands on it will. It was a really down thing we were talking about, right? We did our thank you or janky show. Yep. And, yep. and it was not a thing that was celebrated, uh, to, to put it very mildly. And so, yep. and it's a shame because it's a lot of cool looking miniatures. It was obviously something people put a lot of effort into and now it's back. So yay. Mm. That's great. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have ever, all my stuff queued up to to paint. I can now, hear it in your voice. <laughs> like I am, I'm just tired. I uh, like the I have like all of my stuff queued up to paint, which I'm super stoked about. But now, like with this FAQ, everything like the whole world has changed again. Mm. And so, yeah, maybe Curse City's going to have to go on the on the delay again. Mm. So. Well, we don't know when it's coming next year. We just know it's like it could be anything. It could be. It could be yeah. October no, next true. year. Right? No, so let's true. not get ahead of ourselves here. I doubt it. Usually they only talk about things a quarter or two, four months in advance. But still, we're just saying we don't know. All right. What else we got? Uh, and then finally, model of the year yeah. got announced. Pictures yeah. up. So did everybody go vote for Sigvald? I assume everybody's voting for Sigvald. I mean, uh, nope. he's the February nope. model. <laughs> he would have been, I think, third. Sebastian, Bellacor, and Siggy was my top three. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. I think, uh, who who I think, did you I, think was first, Tyler? I, I got a soft spot for Bastion. Bastion Carthlos, Lord Commander Badass. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Bel Bellacor. Bellacor is mean... going to win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's going to pull both 40K and AOS votes. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What was your top vote, Tom? Uh, Bellacor. Yeah. Yep. Look, I get it. He's good. I think he's not, man. Yeah. yeah. I, but he's not Sigvald. He's not our lord and savior. <laughs> chosen of the dark yeah. princess. Like, he's he's good. He's good. Uh, But, you know, at any rate, everybody go vote. And vote for Sigvald yeah. if you can. Because, you know... Let's, I, I would just, I would love to see him win. I'd love to see a pure AOS model win for the first yeah. time in basically forever. He's not in 40K, is he, Siggy? No. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not, that's not going to happen. Right. I, it's just it's just the 40K thing, man. Like, I it's know. never going to happen. <laughs> like, what, what would it take for us to actually get a win? Like, I think they would, like, the model would have 40K to be 40K so not getting to vote. <laughs> sure 40k people just not voting there's like a yeah. first there's like a first question that's like which game system do you play and if they click 40k yeah. it's like thank you for completing the survey and that's it it just yeah. stops right there for them that's it's the branching that logic moment, seeing, seeing you without glasses on i think this is the first time in like five years that i can remember <laughs> i can recall seeing you without glasses it's very strange you need well, to I had glasses to, my on. glasses were kind of uh that and that hat me. you're weirding us out stop it <laughs> I'll put them back on in a second. I'm cleaning my glasses, okay? Because it was Unacceptable. fuzzy. Uh, and it was occurring to me as I was looking pretty, at both of you. Okay. I don't know. I'm, I'm liking it. Pretty sexy, actually. There we go. Uh, Is that better? That's, uh, yeah. That works. So, right. yeah. And we were talking. Cheers to Byron on Face Hammer for almost winning a game single-handedly with Siggy. Yeah. That was, a, that, was a, that was a fun bat rep on Just Play from a couple weeks yep. back. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. Who would have thought he would end up being the best and only hope, the only good model in the army? Like that, that battle report. If I mean, you want to see, it kind of checks it, out though. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It just when you when we did the original math, he was like the most yeah. out of whack sort of wounds to points ratio. And yeah. you look at him originally in 2.0 when he launched, and you were like, I guess he's okay. And he's just mm. he just shines in the 3.0 era. He really does. Yeah, the healing and the just the. Yeah, just being hard. Yeah, although yeah, he's going to be harder to heal now, as we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right, so I think that's all the news, right? Nothing else? Yeah, no, that's it. Very good. All right, let's go to some pick O the week. Tom, what's your pick? 
Uh, Russ down at Face Hammer did a wonderful uh, FAQ review, and I want to encourage people to check it out. Good pick. I like it. He did that. Like the two of them got together, they did a nice long review. Yeah, I can clearly tell where some of the changes in here wounded them, <laughs> but they do sure. hit. I mean, like, but they do hit on a lot of really good points. I think it's a really good review. Like they go deep. Um, and so it's definitely worth a watch. I'll link it down below. Great choice. Tyler, what do you got? Yeah, I haven't caught that one yet. I'm behind on content. There was... It's the holiday season, buddy. It's the time for content. Just sit I down, your desk, <laughs> get painting, Tyler, and just turn on that Clearly. content. Clearly. Indeed. So, Cinefall Gaming had a great bat rep showcasing some of what we discussed in the Nurgle review. Missed you, Tom, on that one. We're going to have to make sure you're on for the next one when we do the deep dive. But it's just, if you want to see why the internet might be wrong about Nurgle, check out that bat rep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was I mean, unless you're yeah. Vince talking about drones, then you just are wrong. Sure. You're wrong. Yeah. You shut your face. <laughs> Most lists I've seen have a single, at least one pack of drones in them, and for good reason. So my feel my favorite, role. by the way, was like listen, like watching the WhatsApp on Nurgle uh -huh. when they were like, you know, like people were like, yeah, I took my first list out for a spin and all that, and like to the person, every single one was, yeah, such and such perform well. Yeah, those drones were just terrible. Um, I'm probably not going to include the uh, them the next time around, and that happened like four or five times in a row. And I was like, "Sounds like mm. four or five people who don't know how to play with drones." That's all I'm saying right there. Easy answer, my friend. <laughs> or there are just better options for that 200 points. You That's shut awesome. your face. At but any rate, Tom, um, when Tom Mosley is going out and buying like eight Beast of Nurgle, I think by default I win that argument. Yeah, I mean, sure. what I'll say is, like, I, I didn't hate beast of nurgle as much as vince did I, i'm down, like, i'm super down on him i'll admit and hey if i turn out to be wrong i'll cop to that like yeah my like read on him is that they're garbage i i don't think that they're terrible i think that they're an interesting comparison to the to the single plus coil um and that and there's an interesting conversation to be had there so. yeah all right well this isn't the nurgle show but i get time will tell i i, I definitely look at uh, you know lists that are popping around with 130 140 150 plus wounds uh, I know, you know all with a five yeah. up save and i'm like yeah they're they're gonna do just fine uh yep. especially with the null deployment ambushing one drop slash yada 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 okay anyways yep. um right on uh my pick of the week is for uh our good friend andy uh and henry over at call to paint though this video is andy's video um he's been working on a backdrop for his very cool miniature that they released in dear god i can't say how they mm. say it but it's you know, it's Doragard. That's the thing they made. Mm. Doragard. And, um, yeah, so it's a really cool uh, sort of elf satyr dude. And he's been working through the backdrop in a series of videos. And this one is him actually painting all the wildlife stuff in it, like mm. the wood and the trees and all that. And I just feel like it's a super useful video for everybody, even if you're not interested in doing, like, a backdrop. Because there's a, a lot of times I get questions about, like, painting wood and natural scenes that look good, that look realistic. And that's basically what he's covering. So even if you were doing bases or whatever, you know, if you were going to do a Sylvaneth army or anybody sort of with natural woodland bases, I think all the techniques he shows in there are super valuable and super uh, good. So check it out. Uh, mm -hmm. Andy's always a, obviously an amazing painter and a, and a great teacher. So super good. Uh, cool. All right. Gentlemen, let's turn to some hobby time here in the holiday week. Tyler, did you paint anything? <laughs> of course, you know it. <laughs> I, yeah, it's never happening. What have I been doing? Uh, Internet, yeah, please finished. shame Tyler on Twitter and any other social media has, you can when you get no him painting. It's so it. easy. You can do it, Tyler. Anthony, Anthony Polcastro has been shaming me every week for like the past two years and no effect, Polcastro. You're very resistant to social pressure, but we will break <laughs> you. Okay, so did you get some games in? How about that? Yeah, I got some games in. I've been, I got the, I got the pack finished for the tournament. More news on that soon. You guys know I've been working on this uh, pack of 3.0 battle plans, translating to 3.0. We've been getting a lot of test game in with all three, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. That that went out to uh, you guys and some folks to start getting some more feedback. So, yeah, I'm still waiting for your comments. Working about peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Right on. But, yeah, no, I, I feel like they're in a good place and that they're going to they're gonna be nice. So we're going to play those at a one-dayer. 
in January, see how that goes. A couple of others around the world, Constantinos uh, is going to get a one dayer with those three. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, just been doing that. Got some games in. Uh, played against Soul of Light and Sons of Behemoth after the fact. Got to get those games in, I guess, yesterday, yesterday now. And yeah, I, I don't I can go into details, but it take too long. So very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I think I got Stormcast figured out. No, no shooting. Dragon, Dragon Breath doesn't count as shooting. So all melee Stormcast. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tom, how about you? Did you get it? Like, you came down a couple weeks back, and you got, you know, you, you came down to our hobby weekend. This is the funniest thing, Tom. I don't, I didn't really get to tell this story, but so we, we did this painting <laughs> weekend, right? <laughs> so it's Sam, John, Sam Lenz, John Ninas, myself, and Tom came down. It was great. Four of us hung out, had a great grand old time. And ostensibly, John, Tom, or sorry, John, myself, and Sam, there we go, were working on uh, Golden Demon projects. So, like, we basically won model, and it was, we were working on it for more or less the whole weekend. Okay. Yep. And then Sam was doing his duel, so it's technically two models or whatever. But mm. Tom, meanwhile, comes down. He's not going to work on a Golden Demon project. So he brings like his whole like a knight on army. He oh, spends nice. like day one assembling a knight on army. Day two, mm -hmm. he's like priming the whole thing with my airbrush. Which, by the way, I've used my airbrush consistently without issue, Tom, for years. You come down for one day, use my airbrush, and it took me a week and a half to get that thing straight again. I had to disassemble Weird. it multiple times. You are the ruiner. <laughs> I just you are a force of entropy and destruction in the universe. So. <laughs> Weird. At any rate, at the end of the weekend, he's got like, <laughs> like fifty things painted, and I'm like, Amazing. you know, it's really dragging up the whole group average. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Tom. Go ahead. We never. No, I mean, story, it was they weren't they weren't completely done. I still have to do the golds. Yeah. Mm. And my black highlights. <laughs> mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, I made made quite a bit of progress on them. So. Um, Got my lady future. done, a bunch of more chain rasps, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. So, then it's funny. Mm -hmm. Like I got home, and I, you know what I did? I did hobby this week. Um, I built twenty, um, dread scythe heritons. Okay. And I built uh, two more spirit torments, the named guy that came in the box with uh, four chain rasps. Nice. Um, and so I built some more stuff this week, uh, and was getting ready to base them. But I'm glad I didn't because basically I need to just finish my rebase my Nagash apparently and then just <laughs> use what I already have painted because that's where I'm at now is just finishing Nagash will actually finish my Night Hunt army for what I currently already have. So yay me. Easy. One more thing. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into that for sure. Uh, my hobby time has been very busy. So I'm, I'm, you know, this is, I'm done working for the year as it were. I'm taking my time off. Uh, so it's all hobby focus, which uh, means a lot of things. Uh, specifically, what I am working on is these guys right here, our little mm. uh, dragon boys. Uh, my first two of these. Um, I have another box of these. I'll need to do the single character. And then I don't know if I will do any more because I thought these guys were going to be easier than they are. <laughs> They're turning out to all take right. a lot of time. Yeah, oh, it's because there's like a lot of real estate here, and even with oh. the, you know, the airbrush, it's still time consuming, right? Yeah. Um, especially because so you're I only going to do two. Nice. You're only doing two. Well, I don't know, man. We'll see. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, wh what is that going to do for your your Holy Wars army? I already have two thousand points. Right, two thousand points painted. It's just a question of what else I add to the but, list now. But dragons. Sure, I understand, but dragons. <laughs> um, so I've been working on that. Uh, at the same time, I'm also working on uh, the next book that uh, will come out next year uh, with Adam and I. Uh, so made a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of progress on that. Um, both of you gentlemen are going to be involved in that in some way, coming mm -hmm. up here soon in the new year. Uh, but, uh, very, very excited about our next project. I don't know when that'll happen in, in the next year. Don't, not in the beginning of the year. I'll say that much for sure. Mm. Um, and, uh, and then I'm, I, I worked on something that I can't talk about, but will come out in like 
February, March ish of next year that I am very, very, very excited about. And uh, I think other people are going to be as well. So, and will probably lead me to doing an army. So, we'll see. I would say Ooh. nothing more. Ooh. Very mysterious. Wow. It, I, clearly, it just has to be Nervil. Like, what we now know is that Vince is all <laughs> in on Nervil. I mean, I've painted like five, it's not that, but I've painted like five Nervil models now, Tom. Mm-hmm. I will say that. They're fun. Okay. Uh, so, with that, gentlemen, look at that. 20 minutes in, Tyler, with you on I'm the doing, show. And we're getting I'm doing to the my main best. Topic. I, I'm trying to be quiet here. <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job. There you go. Uh, so, gentlemen, let's yeah. uh, let's talk about Battle Scroll in the Winter FAQ. First things first, Battle Scroll, bad name or worse name? Your your feelings. <laughs> well, I have reasons to be yeah to be not a fan of it. Uh, for yeah, for something I won't, I won't talk about. Yeah, that's uh, apparently it's it's very easy to just stick battle in front of everything. You know, we've got battle pack, we got battle plans, we got we got a lot of that going on. So mm-hmm. that that may that may impact my my decisions on a, on a project. Uh, we'll say, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know, whatever, dude. It's it, it's it's in your in your words, actually Tom's words, both of your words. You both say this a lot. You read everybody. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> uh, it's a silly name. I you could tell its marketing was like, quick, we need <laughs> we need a name yeah. for this. Put the put the thing in front of it that we always put in front of it. <laughs> like, okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, so great, good stuff. Uh, Are like, we getting? Uh, I don't want to jump the gun, but we got to talk about obviously what's our schedule going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. B- I want to end on that, not start on okay. it. Okay. All right, fair enough. Because I, I do want to talk about the future of this thing. Also, by the by, thank you, W Store, and I was going to say that. But, like, I realized as I was saving all the files associated to this and kept abbreviating it to BS <laughs> that you did yourself no favors, GW, by putting this no, out no. and then having Mark the acronym itself. being BS. <laughs> Markets itself, I see no, I see no problem here. No, no yeah. issues at all. Yeah. Okay, uh, Brian S says I'm holding out for the pugilistic mm. parchment. Love it, love it. Okay, so uh, here's where I want to start. Overall impressions of this, like, let's do a simple one to ten. One being absolutely terrible, they shouldn't have even published this. Ten being it was everything you could hope for and more. Never would you need another one. Right or something like that. Where you fall in number wise, and what do you think at a high level? Tyler, you you start us off. Yeah. All right. So between a six and a seven, so okay. six and a half. With the idea that I'm expecting, I'll just jump the gun. I'm expecting this to portend essentially quarterly changes is what I think we're going to be looking at. You know, they've had this incrementalist orientation for a while, and I think this was implemented de- better than poorly uh, you know, on the positive side when it comes to the rules changes and then it was much more of a mixed bag on the points so yeah about six and a half okay I really like for the most part like the rules changes points we, we've got quite a bit to talk about there yeah Just in, yeah so, yeah all right right on uh, I want to take a moment here to say, audience, by the way, what do you think? Give me a number between 1 and 10. Drop it in the chat. And hey, while you've got your keyboard and mouse and you're clicking things to type a number, why not also hit that like button or subscribe? Because you're already moving your mouse around and clicking things. Just keep clicking. It's fun. Tom, mm-hmm. where are you at? Like a 5. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Like it, Love it. They updated like 15 units. I mean, I know there's more than that, but like... Mm-hmm a single sheet of units. They rewrote three war scrolls, which is great ish. Um, And I don't know. I just, yeah, they updated some core rules that were, but that seemed problematic that third edition introduced, but as for like army adjustments, maybe five. Like they just, there's just a lot more like 
raw things that need to be dealt with, and they just didn't touch them. Yeah. Like, the DPS check of the Giants, like, maybe the Amulet of Destiny removal will fix that, but really? I don't know. Giants, yeah, I'm moving into, I don't know if I want to talk more about Giants right now. I have a slightly different opinion on Giants in that regard. Like, I'm in the TLDR, I think that from the ecosystem standpoint, Giants are essentially fine and are going to be increasingly fine as we move forward. And yet, from an initial condition standpoint, they're still problematic. And yeah, and, and you know, unless you address the initial conditions, they're going to continue to be problematic to, to a certain degree. But anyhow. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna actually go with like I see I want to say five two but it's a little bit better than it's like slightly above average for me it's like five and a half mm-hmm. you know and I know that's kind of cheating but like I, I I just wouldn't in good conscience say it a five but I also can't put it a six so it's you know in the middle there right like I I like some of the stuff in here and we'll talk about it but at the same time I was hoping for more in light of what we saw with the forty k thing. Right. Yeah. That's sort of my challenge. It's an expectation thing, I think, as much as anything. That they kind of set expectations in two ways. First, they published the forty K thing. Right. And and did a lot of lift up for, for suffering forces. And then two, they said they specifically said, no one put a gun to their head, no one made them write mm-hmm. this. They said this first one is gonna focus on on weaker armies. Right? Yeah. Right. Like, that was in the text that they wrote. And we did that whole show about, cool, let's put those two pieces of information together. Yep. They're going to focus on the weaker okay. armies, and here's yep. what the 40K would look like. And we said, okay, here's some cool, simple rules they could do in the style of the 40K data slate, right? Mm. That would, um, you know, that would then b- help boost some of these forces. And, you know, I don't know if you saw... <laughs> Honest War Gamers' uh, newest stats chart of since the FAQ or since the yeah, sorry since the yeah Stormcast and and Oric FAQ I think is basically when it was cut from, but it was pretty fascinating. Okay, because Seraphon yeah. pushed over sixty percent. They're at sixty. Right. They, Sinister... they had a sizable tick up over the last couple of months. I think they were yeah sixty three percent was the latest. Yeah, well that's sixty one. But yes, they hunt oh, so sorry, well in this meta, right? I mean, it depends on exactly when you cut the starting time on tyler like they're on a hard upward trend yeah right right the exact number actually doesn't matter that much it's the trend line right and the fact that they're out of whack like we know that and the you know my challenge is the sinister six is still the sinister six we'll talk we'll see where they stand we'll get our opinions the middle like this the the middle middle the 55 to 45 Mm. actually shrunk a little because a few more armies fell down into either the broader fat middle, you know, 44 to 40, or even below. Yeah. Right? Mm. There's quite a lot of armies kicking around at 39 now. Like, look, I, I know I beat this horse all the time, but Slanesh was at, like, 32 or 33, something like that. I mean, it was woof. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people down there who would have liked some love, and this didn't really do that. Okay, mm. so let's get into it. Positives. Here's my positives. It's a good first change. Overall, I understand it was their first one. They were probably being conservative. So I can I can appreciate that, right? So uh that's fine, right? And they did address that they, they they're seeing some real challenges out there in acting. I think this is good. This is a really good thing. Like they addressed things that I wanted to see addressed, not everything. But they right. did hit some systematic stuff and they hit it in a good way, and actually I think very cleverly with some of these as we'll talk about okay yep the negatives the points changes are basically irrelevant mostly there's a few there's a few exceptions but for the most part they're pretty irrelevant uh and several items are still unaddressed unaddresses how about unaddressed Mm -hmm. (laughs) unaddressed there we go okay you know, and I think that's that's the challenge, right? Um, but, you know, to be fair, and as we'll talk about, if this is the first time we're going to do this, and we're going to roll these quarterly, 
and we start getting some new books in the new year at a decent pay, at a decent clip, which we can all hope. Like, are yep. we still doing a shipping thing, or is that stop now? Or is, is shipping back to almost to, to like previous pandemic it's normals? Cr- Where are it's we at? Christmas, man. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> like, I don't know. I haven't heard about that recently. Did that get fixed? I guess I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, I haven't heard much either. So maybe some folks in the comments or in the, in the chat. Yeah. yeah, like, I mean, I know shipping has been rough the entire pandemic, so it is it is what yeah. it is. But, like, are we back to that normal as opposed to the crisis level or whatever? <laughs> right. So the point is, if we start seeing some real books roll out and we do this quarterly, I think this is a perfectly fine place to start, okay? Sure. It, because we do have to accept that, like, okay, we couldn't do everything in the first one. They're not going to put out, you know a 50 page document like we talked about, right? Like we've got to be realistic. They want to do incremental change, roll it out through the app, publicize it so people get used to it and start looking at it, fine. I think quarterly is still fast. I don't love it, okay? Uh, But if that's going to be the trend, then fine. Then let's do some incremental stuff here, Yeah. okay? All right. So yeah, this if it's this level of change, then yeah, personally very comfortable with quarterly, and I I suspect many people will be as well, kind of with this degree of change. I do want to talk more about the points. I don't know if we want to do it right now, but just in uh, terms I, of I want to save the feeling, points because yeah, we'll, we'll get yeah, there. Yeah, just getting yeah weird vibes just in terms of the lack of perceived process or sufficient process when it yeah. comes to this. this Agree. We're decisions. we're gonna we're gonna get yeah. into the points. I moved it out of the order. As you yeah. saw, that, that it's in the PDF because I was like, no, nah, no, nah, this needs its whole section. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about what wasn't addressed. What's the things we didn't see? Okay. Yep. No new rules for the underperforming armies in the style of the 40K update. Now, that doesn't mean cool. every underperforming army might not have gotten a buff. Clearly, like, there's some incremental points adjustments to some of them. Right. One of them might have got the biggest Christmas present they've been asking for for a while. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. I wonder who that might be. Who, yeah. hmm, hmm. It mm. might have something to do with a a Christmas carol and being visited. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we'll we'll get into it. But we mm. didn't get those changes, right? We didn't get like what we saw in the 40k update. You know, yep. where suddenly a bunch of Necron stuff is obsec or whatever or whatever they did. Didn't see save stacking addressed. Not at all. And I have to believe uh, that they didn't address save stacking right now. This is just my guess. Here's here's my thought. I, I'll be interested to see what you, you gentlemen think. Mm. They basically shot Amulet and Heroic Reserve in the head, right? They Or they, right. at least they kneecapped them. Right. Okay. And you're, I wonder... you think they're hoping that that will address the survivability? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, to be fair, a lot of how normal safe stacking heroes were surviving was often by also healing a D3 every turn. Yeah. Even in yeah. combat. Like, that did a lot. You know, yeah. when you can heal 10 D3 wounds over the course of a game, uh, then it makes so the few wounds you sneak through on a safe stack yeah. hero just become irrelevant. Now that those are, especially when you also had a five up potential after save to, to stop it, right? And just the ROI, sort of, you know, like the return on investment calculus that you're doing in terms of where you're allocating your, your range damage. Right. Right. In a, in a number of situations. Yeah. So I have to wonder if they thought, let's start here with these two, kind of fix these. If they thought mm. that's the underlying thing, right? Yeah. And then actually we'll see if that softens the save stacking problem. Now, I don't know that that's right. I'm not even sure I would think that that would be plausible. Okay. Mm. But it is true that those three things were forming kind of a, you know, devil's combo, as it yeah. were. Right? Indeed. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. It's It's reasonable. Yeah, and like we've discussed, I was very worried that we were going to get safe stacking and it was going to be the easy button. Right, yeah, which, which I which would really we talked about mess why up we the... think it's wrong. Yes. 
Yeah, really, I think that would mess up the game sizably. Um, easy button being just plus one safe cap. That, yeah, suddenly elevates shooting, which arguably, I don't know, we'll, we'll get into whether actually long range in particular, you know, like long range mortal wound shooting has been net elevated um, with all of these changes. Or maybe it's a bit of a wash. I know we can, we can discuss that. But, well, I think the answer yeah. is yes. I think they can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, you guys, I had a... Actually, a fa just real quickly, a fascinating game. You know, playing a lot of Stormcast, kind of figuring out what commission's going to be, staying away from long strikes. It's just boring to play long strikes. Like, I know what they do. I don't need to play them. Sure. I know what 15 Judicators do. So I've been playing the four Fulminators, 10 Protectors, uh, a 300-point or 325-point hero, you know, mix and match between, like, Bastion or Aventus or Celestine Prime, and then the usual, like, Relictor, Castellan, etc. Okay, so it's a solid list. And I played against Soulblight, who I've mentioned to you before, Vince, I've been struggling with more than any, you know, playing all the top factions in this game. For whatever reason, I struggle the most against Soulblight. Sure. And this isn't the Nagash, Vingorian Lord, Vordry, whatever Soulblight. It's the, you know, here's all my various good pieces, Manfred, Graveguard, Dire Wolves, etc. The point being that I lost yesterday, played, pretty, you know, pretty well. I made like one clear mistake. That was about it couple of quibbles and it fit my opponent was getting frustrated throughout that entire game because for the most part i was always on a two up and a three up save sure and and generally more than half of the time on a two up save whenever he was engaging and yet i lost that game handedly sure what kind of point being like that it i don't know it's one game but i've had a few of those games where it's like interesting this you know this is a safe stacking army that Another, you know, I'm actually losing games when I'm on a two up and a three up and not doing stupid things. And I just found that kind of maybe notable. Yeah. In, in terms of the yeah, zombies yeah. and mortal wounds. There you go. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly the yeah. case that it feels bad when you don't kill things. This was, this is the fundamental problem of defense that I've talked about before in, in own yeah. dedicated videos, right? My opponent was right. so frustrated. And he's a very cool, calm guy. My friend Dan. Dan is our, arguably our coolest head in our local group. But you know, it was kind of funny watching Dan get a little salty in that game, which, yeah, but by, but he won the game handedly. And yet he yeah, felt sure. the entire time that he was going to, it was just a strange experience. Like, what the hell happened here? Right. I mean, we get sure. into deep details. But, because yeah. there's some kind of fundamental NPE, to at least certain, to certain psychographic profiles, of not being able to kill models. Like, no, no, we came here with the yeah. agreement that we're going to have a punch <laughs> up and, and people are going to lose stuff. And then at the end, somebody wins, right? And that's kind of yeah. the, 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 the imaginary social contract, right? And so when that gets, when that doesn't happen, even if you're winning, you're like, well, this isn't how I wanted to win. This isn't a fun yeah. way to win for, for some yeah. segment of the population, right? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so we'll see. I imagine that this has sort of got to be up on the list of things that they would look at for the future, but they want to see how it rolls from here. So, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see an update of any kind of coherency. Kind of a shame. Although they did touch stuff in the core rules, so it tells me they're willing to make changes like this. Yeah, um, no, that's true. So I'm I'm happy to see that. We didn't see any changes to reinforcements for the suffering armies down in the in the Sullen Six. No. No addressing of hero phase shooting, which I still think is just the poison pill of this game right now. Um, mm, is like hero phase shooting slash mortal wound shooting? Yeah, mortal but I mean like. Shooting, yeah. I get, like I've, I've actually typed this out in the comments multiple times like to people yeah. who say things and it's like this mortal wound shooting is bad long range mortal wound shooting is terrible long range mortal wound shooting uh, <laughs> that can tap twice is straight poison mm. right so it's it's not it's all of those things stacking if it was like imagine if Ungor Raiders were the best shooting in the game like that was it I don't mean to change their yep. their I don't mean we change their shooting at all. I mean, like, the weapon that they have and the way they shoot is the best shooting on offer in the game. That's it. That is the peak of power in shooting, okay? Yeah. No one would care about hero face shooting. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay? It would be irrelevant. Yeah. All right? It's the, it's the combination of all those things that just shouldn't happen. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we didn't... So this was the shocker to me. No change to foxes. Mm -hmm. no right. point no nothing yeah no points is it is it just because is it just because there's no saturation meaning that there not enough people are playing it 
Right. There's a handful of players that are exploiting yeah. it, but there's not yeah. like it's not like every event has one or two players running it. It's like old school fire slayers, right? Yeah. Like super powerful in Hermdar, Lords of the Lodge. Sure. But like how often were people, people doing running? it? Yeah. I, right. Uh, it's not the most popular. You know, there's at least probably well, so obviously the Techland build is more popular. Right. Uh, right. Than, than right. That. Or the fifty yeah. sentinels build. Or the fifty yeah, the fifty cent, the yeah, the jack, yeah. Yeah. The the re rolling ones, Jack T M built, yeah. Indeed, yeah. He's in the chat. Hey Jack. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Uh and I don't know that it's necessarily sword winners, by the by. I get it. Sword winners are generally pretty awful to play against. Um, but I mean like there's just a feeling of like you can't help it, you're gonna have an emotional reaction. And if what you draw psychological value from in the game is killing things, which is by the way a very Timmy thing, it's what I like. Mm -hmm. I love killing things in the game. When my stuff dies, I'm generally like, meh, okay, it's fine, whatever. You know. As long as it got to do a thing, I'm generally pretty happy with it. Um so I that's get like it. the great that's like the greatest acid test I've ever heard of are you a Timmy or not? I hate losing models. I don't know about you, Tom, but I mean, uh, if, if, if they're I, supposed to die, I will happily lose the models that are supposed to die. They're doing their job. I'll lose those models. Oh, it's so painful losing something that's not supposed <laughs> to die. Particularly right. not. No, that's exactly <laughs> right. Like I have like a third of my army that's allowed oh. to die. Exactly. Like the, these, these like three units are allowed to die every game. If anything yeah. else dies, I'm pissed. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sorry, no, the only thing that bothers me is if something dies and I did, I literally just got to do nothing with it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it didn't go anywhere or do anything. If, like, I had some Fulminators charge in and blow a unit up and then they get countercharged and die in return, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Fair dinkum. Sure. Cool. Good. We we both did a thing. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Like, I'm happy about it, you know? Sure. Okay. Anyways. Neither here nor there. But, yes, it is a great Timmy uh, litmus test. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's get into the let's get into the meat of this, shall we? Okay. So. Uh, all right. You didn't you didn't have the. Sorry, just time stamping stuff. Okay. Yeah, the the sentinels. We talked a little bit about sentinels. You know what sentinels change? Do we need? Is it just a point increase? Is it lambda light change? Is it the line of sight? Uh, is the battle I'm line sure. status? The battle They're line like status. twenty points. Like twenty points. We'll get we there. We'll get there. Stop jumping ahead to points, Tyler. We'll get there. <laughs> right. And I want to say nice. Merry Christmas to Relly. And what's up, brother? I hope you're doing well, sir. Uh, yeah, so Brad, he's going to get us. Let's just say, Tyler, jumping back to that, uh, okay. I'm glad that I built in uh, like a six, like a sixty to seventy five point window buffer in my Holy Wars list. That's specifically right. for sentinel point jumping and it, it moved up and i'm like yes it's right. still legal oh, sure that's just logic <laughs> okay let's get into the specifics here gentlemen i want to i want to i want to okay. i want to get into this so number one 7.1 heroic recovery the change we had two positive changes here in my uh estimation okay okay so one is you can now only use heroic recovery when you're more than three inches from all enemy units. Right? Yep. And two, we got rid of the whole equal to your bravery, under your bravery, greater than your bravery nonsense that should have never reached print. Look, GW rules designers, this is a little call out for you, okay? Here's a simple rule, to, like a guideline for writing rules. If you're ever writing a rule that's a light switch and you want to add a middle setting, stop and say, right. will this rule work as a light switch, as a pass or fail, as a yes or no? If it still works, just use that version. Right. Don't add multiple options. Right. It only adds complexity. Right. It's adding nothing except complexity. So good change. Well done. Positive. Uh, yeah, so they you basically can't heal in combat, and now if you hit the, your bravery or less, equal to or less yep. then, um, then you heal D3. Okay. This is a positive change. Mm. I like this. Yep. I think this actually does do quite a lot at, uh at preventing sort of save stacking heroes from just standing around in combat forever. 
I mean, this was my trick with, like, my Knight Vexlor. He would unleash his banner and then just go run into combat and just tie something up yeah. for all time because he would just sit there and <laughs> take a couple wounds, heal. Take a couple wounds, heal. Take a couple wounds, yeah. heal. Right? That was it. So, this will stop that from happening. Uh, which, by the way, you do still heroic recover from shooting. So, to your earlier question, like, oh. this is still just as effective at undoing shooting wounds, but it's now yeah. much or less Nurgle effective. Or Nurgle splash but, damage. Sure, or Nurgle splash damage. Uh, well, depending. Because, I mean, a lot of Nurgle splash damage now happens through technically being in combat and getting diseased, sure. which would shut it mm. off. But I take your meaning. If you're talking like Rodigus' spell yeah. or something, right? So, um, yeah, I think this is all positive. I mean, I, I, I love this change. I'm all for it. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, think it's, awesome. a, it's a subtle change that will make a, sh a significant shift in hero survivability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We didn't have much, uh, I didn't hear much conversation in the community about this, you know, in terms of expectations or predictions, uh, you know, insights from someone in the community thinking like this. So it's, it's really cool to see this nice, subtle, you know, nuanced change, uh, changes that they made to this. Yeah, big fan. To me, this one, upside, good against shooting. Um, also, nice that it's easier for, like, Bravery 7, 8 people to actually hit and get the D3 now. Yep. Um, against shooting. So, good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah, positive. Okay, great. But shuts off in melee. Same way, you know, you could control it the same way you do rally or something like that, right? Like, yeah, great, you mm -hmm. can rally in combat. Okay. Unleash Hell. We had we had tagged this as something that needed to be fixed. And mm -hmm. I gotta say, okay, here's my read on this. They fixed it in a way that I hadn't thought of that I was really impressed by. Yeah. Uh, Another one where the where we the community missed yeah. the, the second part in particular of it. Yep. Yeah. Cause I had been pushing for just like be within three inches. Hmm. And I and a lot of people said, no, nah, it's too much, da 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 da, you know, whatever. It's fine. We didn't get went to six inches. We split the difference, right? Between nine and three. We went to six. Mm -hmm. But fine. But the huge change here that's so important, right? Is that models in the unit that receive the command that are within six inches of the target can shoot in that phase. Right. So the model itself, you can't like toe in one sentinel. And then have the whole unit of 30 explode on you. Yeah. Right? And their 3x10 Shining Company layout. Yeah, stretched horizontally. Yeah. Yep. And there are some... Uh, there are some, like, model slash situations that, realistically, this doesn't affect too much. I know. Like, <laughs> thankful Or, you know, anybody who's, like, a single thing, like a... a the Medusa Shrine or yep. Thankful, you know, people who are doing like mortal wounds on the charge, right? Mm. Uh, it doesn't hurt KO almost at all. Because yeah. they tend to have small units? Is that what it is? Like No, like if anybody's in a boat or the boats themselves. Oh, sure. out of boat shooting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was, I'm, I'm picturing like right. a Thunderer standing on the table, but yeah. Like, yeah, Thunder's on the table, it affects. But like if the Thunders are in the boat, sure, not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, or, the, or the Ironclad itself. Right. Yep. But this is a good change, because a lot of the units that really, let's be honest, that, that abused Unleash Hell in a way we didn't love, Sentinels, Bow Snakes, yep. you know, all these kinds of things. Iron yeah. Drakes to some degree, yeah. Yep. Oftentimes, you can now control who, how many of those models will get to shoot you. Like, it puts, yeah. that little change puts the power back in the, the, the control of you, the charging player, a lot yep. to make sure that like okay I'll, I'll take one raptor to the face that's fine i can i can do that <laughs> right i would say they're the least Im I mean, of course they're going to be the least impacted because it's going to be a unit of six you can make that unit pretty tight so meaning that it's going to be easier to maintain six being in range even with the uh, per model as opposed to iron drakes sentinels bow snakes they have a sizable footprint compared to sure six and drakes. if you're charging that unit uh directly mm. right you're probably still getting clipped by the whole thing in the case of like raptors but oftentimes yeah. you couldn't get at the raptors and now you can like raptors are often bubble wrapped 
okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes oh, yeah. you just got to get in there and eat that, and then maybe you can get into them on the pile in or whatever, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And the reality is you can, like, not every game, but often you'll still be able to limit it so that whole unit of six raptors ain't shooting at you. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, and Relian said that, and I agree with him, This is they've made similar changes in the past. If you think about, like, Fire Slayer shields and the shield throw, yep. right? It was who all was, like, who got to throw oh, the little yeah, yeah. thing. Yep. Mm -hmm was who was within range when they charged. So you couldn't, like, string out the unit 30 inches long and then have 30 people throw shields from oh, eight man. miles away. I remember when you could. It was great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> they just, like, really spun around a lot and got that, like, Olympic disc throwing. That was absolutely one of my tricks. Sure. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is a great change. This really weakens the efficacy of Unleash Hell, the only unit that I think will still not care about this too much are probably, like, that, that is annoying is, like, Salamanders. Mm-hmm. Right? Because Sallies are often in, they're in units of one or two. I mean, that is that is simply what they can be taken in. And oftentimes the two of them are sitting right next to each other to the point where it's like, well, eat yeah. it. <laughs> you know, there's just no yeah. way around it. Yep. Uh... So, yeah, I mean, any other any other thoughts on this? Do you let, let me put it this way to you, gentlemen. Tom, mm. does this fix the challenge of Unleash Hell or is it still a problem? I I never felt like it was a problem, but I was often playing the armies that was using it. So sure. Yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. Tyler? Oh. Uh, I suspect if we get some other updates in 2022, particularly maybe in the next quarterly, uh, specifically, I hate the third rules change that we're about to talk about. Mm -hmm. And when I pair that with the changes to Unleash Hell, uh, it doesn't go, uh, Unleash Hell may not be quite fixed, but on the whole, yeah, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if this is enough. Okay. I'll, I'll say that it's quite, it's quite good. I th here's my answer. I think this mm. fixes Unleash Hell, but it doesn't fix the underlying problem of most of the, like many of the problem units because right. they didn't do enough to actually rein those bad boys in. That's what I was trying to say. Thank Thank you. You. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like, I, I think if you got rid of the problem for units, like we've weakened them, although yeah. they're going to get a buff here in a second. Yes, I agree. Um, but we've, we've weakened their efficacy at shooting off turn. But, but we're still not properly coding into their points the fact that every time they're taken, every one of the problem units, other than Salamanders, I suppose, shoots in the hero phase. Or shoots yeah. twice in some way, right? Yeah. Like, Raptors or Judicators shoot twice. Bow Snakes shoot twice. Uh, Bastilodons shoot twice, right? Like, these are often, it's just what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> we need to. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we deserve a show in defense uh, entitled "In Defense of Shooting," <laughs> and that we need to have a more in depth. You know, like if I were sometimes I feel like if I were Jack, and you would, you would get tired hearing people talk about. You know, I, I don't know. Hey, I have a an solution. Don't play yeah. uh, exploity <laughs> shooting armies, and you won't get. You won't. You won't have to feel bad about people talking about your army. Yeah, well, I have an anti-shooting bias, so we don't need to spend 30 minutes on this, but so like, Tom, you're a fan of shooting. You know, you have shooting armies. Vince, you have shooting armies. Sure. I do worry about, you know, like sometimes I struggle to figure out what's the right balance with these things, you know? Sure. Like, we've got, we're going to be talking a lot about Kragnos here tonight, and what Kragnos is going to be doing. We know about Iron Jaws. We've got a number of examples of melee doing work in this game. Yeah, yeah. And, like, shooting needs to have a role, and I, I'm struggling with trying to get a sense of, like, Where's the middle ground with this? Yeah, stuff? sure. It's uh, which is true. It, it is probably where the whole show. It's it's a tough thing to balance because the game has to have it. Otherwise, it gets into a real bad place, like we were in in mid twenty nineteen, which was not positive, yep. right? Like where where buff heroes, little five wound buff heroes, were all immortal, running around just supercharging Death Star units over and over again, and mm. it was a bad time. 
mm-hmm. right? And it warped the game in a, in a bad direction. I mean, so, so I, agree I was playing as... Doc. It was pretty fantastic. No, I understand. <laughs> I mean, I was certainly, I was playing Slanesh. So yes, we were both abusing it. Um, we're both bad people, mm-hmm. Tom. Um, but the, you know, the, the reality is, is that it's one of those things that people don't like. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like right. it's, right. it's like people don't love when shooting crosses a certain efficacy barrier. Yep. If people feel like they can be beaten solely on shooting without people fighting against them, maybe that's the line. I don't know. But shooting, when we did the NPE survey, I mean, it was it was number Clear. one with a bell. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it took that blue ribbon and ran with it. All right. Anyways. That would be a good show, you know, like, and like maybe figuring out some litmus tests. Like, for example, should you be able to, on average, take off a cabbage with Thunderbolt six long strikes, Thunderbolt volley six long strikes? Should that, because right now in this six up ward that we're about to get into, Amulet of Destiny, where you're probably not running that on the cabbage anymore, that's where we're at. You're doing sure. about 19 to 20 damage. Uh, assuming a few variables, uh, assuming like finest hour, I, I did looked at that today, assuming finest hour and then all that defense in the shooting phase, not birds, translocating, you get the plus one hit in the hero phase, you know, little things like that. But should that be a thing, which is where we are right now in terms of shooting? Anyway, yeah, I'd love to do a show around a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be interesting. Sure. All right. So 27.5.2, the Amulet of Destiny. We all saw a change coming. Mm. And like the 94 Winter Olympics just crack right in the kneecap. Uh, Mm. The bearer has a ward of 6 plus. Okay. By the way, this is probably the way this thing should have always been written. As a universal artifact, they shouldn't have ever been the defaults. That is to say, this shit is how it probably should have come out. Right? Mm -hmm. But. I disagree. But we'll keep going. But I'm I'm just saying, like, if you were going to make a. Shouldn't. Here's what. Here's. Quick argument, Tyler. Shouldn't the yeah. core artifacts be milk toast vanilla, slightly worse than like in a perfect game? Assume no priors, okay? Yeah. In a perfect AOS world, shouldn't the priors be the core artifacts are milk toast vanilla, slightly worse than anything in your book to achieving your army's stuff? More that be than the not. Although, I, what about the design principle of? artifacts that can help fill gaps without filling them too you much. can do that and that fits in my world okay yeah. like that you can have milk toast stuff can sometimes fill a role mm-hmm. right like by the way the arcane tome is not a very complicated artifact but it fills a role that's what mm-hmm. i'm thinking like to me is that one too much for you no. as a universal no okay okay cool yeah what i say i disagree is that to me this should be a minimum five up against mortal wounds period sure okay. that's the universal app that needs to be filled and is now gone sure. we talked about ignac scales a four up ward which are sorry four yeah. up against mortal wounds only which i really liked mm-hmm. that's the thing that i hate the most about this uh what do we call it battle scroll is this change is the lack of going to at least a five up against mortals yep and the consequences right. of that yeah i mean I don't disagree. Here's the thing. We knew this was coming and it makes me sad and because they went with the most boring option. And you know yeah. it's the most boring option because they wrote the box and it was so boring and empty that they had to go grab a quick art asset <laughs> and shove it in there to, to to clean up that negative space that they had created. Okay? And they're like, look at this pile of trash. <laughs> <laughs> again meta right mm. um yeah this is the this is the most boring sort of potential outcome that's the most yeah. boring world yeah we're, we're living in the and it's, it's not the best of all possible worlds it's the boringest of all possible worlds mm. right um do you disagree that the amulet didn't need to be changed it needed some change it needed some change. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So we're all in yeah. agreement there. Yeah, I mean, the disproportionate impact on things like giants and stuff like that, it just, it had to change. The question yeah. is, is, what did that change look like? 
Um, I was a fan of the Ignax, the four plus against Mortal Wounds. I think that that's what it should have stayed. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what I'm back in. I truly love the the insane design of, you know, the last wound two up yeah. until it fails kind of thing. Like, I think that would yeah. have been fun and kooky. I know it breaks my own design principle, but it does. You know, like whatever. <laughs> they're clearly they're breaking it too because they don't they don't actually write good artifacts in the army book. So I don't feel like we need to play by those rules. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, like the I I, I just would have rather see them see, done something fun here and cool. In the end, like I I know I talked about that should have been the design principle in the void, but I actually think that's the boring way to go. I think the cool way to go would be to make these interesting, but not powerful. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, could have been new Ignax. Could have just been a flat five up against Mortal Wounds only. That still would have been better than this because it it, it would fill a necessary role of, of giving the important Mortal Wound protection in a world yeah. where there's still too many yep. units doing Mortal Wounds at range too cheaply. Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think it's going to be impactful. Um, so yeah, I... Like... Overall, I think I come down on this one fifty one percent positively mm. in that it will stop some abuses of like it will stop empowering abuses in a lot of different armies. Sure. But I'm like forty nine percent negative because it was mm. done in sort of the least interesting way. And now all the armies that were actually the like the softer armies that that were using it to build up their like to actually have a hero yep. that could do something, they've right. just lost this as an option. Yeah, which quite a few, pro boys with their you know fourteen wound heroes yep. or maybe even their whatever the breaker boss with like twelve wounds. You were talking the other day, Vince, about keepers of, keeper of secrets. Yeah, yeah. Of Dirt, yeah. There's quite a few of those, but I mean in terms, it's I don't think it was that sizable of a category that we were talking about here in terms of abusers. We had cabbage, definitely. I mean, the obvious, oh, quick, megas, sure. that's number one, cool. Uh, we had cabbages, we yep. had, it was lifting up star drakes. A lot of people thought star drakes were unplayable, thought they were getting a bad rap. They're now really have gotten, you know, taken down a peg with the heroic recovery change and then this change. Uh, star drakes are a great example. I mean, they were the example, as we know, uh, particularly in 2019, of this principle, what made them particularly playable? Ignax scales. Yeah. So sure. it's just it's I you know did we fail as a community to like communicate our thoughts on this collectively that they just they missed what the issue was here. The issue is the mortal wound spam. Yeah. And particularly ranged mortal wounds. That's what we need amulet to address, not regular damage. And right. this this has not addressed that whatsoever. It's gone in the opposite direction. Yeah, the, the other thing, and I was just about to mention this, so thank you, Germ. Um, you know, we could have, like, locked this to models under a certain wounds category, mm. right? Like, X wounds or less, or without yeah. the monster keyword, or, 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 like, right? Like, you, in other words, you, you could have constrained it in some other way and left it in its old form, right? It could have, this, the bearer yeah. has a five-up word. This cannot be given to, you know, a model with a monster keyword, or with more of the ten wounds or more, or whatever or 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 right like again we went through over the past six months i mean we had to have gone through 10 ways to fix this amulet and like Mm -hmm. yes it's fixed but it's fixed in probably the worst possible way and we haven't addressed the underlying problem right right so that's the issue to me yeah Agreed. Right. Um, And, you know, it's hard for me to believe that they'll change this again. That they'll eat crow on Mm. it. No, it's just done. I mean, like, I hope they do. (laughs) I hope they listen to this and go, oh, wait, actually, we... You're right. You're right, Vince, Tyler, and Tom. We did fix this in the most boring way possible. Let's put it back to something, you know, a little more interesting, a little more valid. and, uh, and, And we'll go from there. Nope, that's not where we're going. Uh, but hey, uh, <laughs> Hazier Weekly said Mega Gargan's break amulet through overuse ruined things for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. 
yeah, I mean, this is, you know, again, so many ways we could have gone, we didn't go there. And it's basically mm -hmm. now not a good artifact, I guess, is the way I would say it. It's well, pretty much yeah, that simple. Of the ones that were in the category of who would have taken it previously, they're never going to take it now. Cabbage, right. you're not going to run this on a cabbage, I don't think. I mean, you know, now you... I'm all in on the Arcane Tome build, baby. That's that's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. There, and, I mean, and there's, a, I think, a better version of this that gives you a minus one to hit permanently plus a six-up board, I believe, in the Iron Jaws book, like Armor of Gork or something. It reduces your move by two inches. It's plus one to hit. A six-up board, plus one to plus hit, one to you hit. lose two inches to movement. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to take it, like, you don't care about two inches of movement on your cabbage because you can, you have right. a million, <laughs> million ways to move freely. So who cares? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, data for the mothership. Do sons still take it? Uh, maybe. I mean, it, it, a six up does do some amount of work over the course of their entire, their giant wound profiles. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'll tell you, they're definitely going to prioritize arcane tome over this now. It's not, it's like, if you only have one artifact, you're taking the tome, you're not taking this. Uh, Fire Ant Farm says cabbage, meaning, oh, sorry, we're using shorthand. Oh, uh, yeah, that sure. would be the Auric, uh Mega Boss on Maw Crusher, who is a tiny little, who is a model that looks like a little cabbage because of the way the wings mm -hmm. are up like that. So we all just call him the shorthand for cabbage. Um, in the same way that we call the Ghoul King on Terror Guys the Kumquat for reasons that are just <laughs> completely <Officially> obtuse. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, these things happen. Mm. Okay. Uh, before we leave this little section, anything else in the core rules here that didn't change that you were hoping to see change other than coherency, which we already talked about, save stacking, like, but specifically numbered rules. Anything you didn't see here? Another artifact? Command trait? Anything um, like that? We have some outstanding issues with uh, garrisoning, right? There are some outstanding issues with garrisoning, yes. You can pile yeah. in from a garrison, which is insane. <laughs> yes, that should be fixed. Mm. I'll, I'll give you that one, 100%. Good one, Tom. The bodyguards, you know, still has been officially cleaned up. Uh, the confusion that lingers around that. Or, I don't know if it's, confusion is the right word, but just the mess that lingers around bodyguards. Bodyguard was just warded, or warded in such a way that it says, you know, like, uh, X, uh, you know, such and such unit gives ward four plus to a nearby unit. Every time damage is prevented this way, this unit suffers one mortal wound that's a non-preventable. Right. So it utilizes a mechanic that we already have. There's no confusion on whether it stacks. There's, you know, like, do you think mm -hmm. we could back end and just get around all that confusion by using... Probably. They'd the have to go and rewrite all right. those scrolls. That's what they don't want to do. But yes, it's the right way to do it, Tom. Having a trigger set up exactly like... It was exactly where my brain went to. You and I think very similarly along this line. But yes, setting up a, a triggered set of conditions like that is the right way to go. Yeah. Yep. You just yeah. say, hey, you give this buff to a nearby unit that prevents damage, but every time it prevents damage, you suffer uh, you know, damage you can't prevent. Mm -hmm. Done. It doesn't surprise me they didn't touch Battle Reg. You know, we talked a lot about Battle Regiment in the, in the mm -hmm. Wishlist show. It doesn't surprise yep. me they didn't touch it yet. I I hope that's still on a hit list for future mm -hmm. shows. For oh my gosh, yeah. Episodes. Your your camera turned off by the way, Tom, which I assume was I know it did. Okay. Uh, that was the one that I haven't really sat down and thought enough about it, you know, in terms of we we had quite a bit of discussion. I'd be curious what Tom's views and summary are on that one, Vince. You know, I I told you I, I just couldn't quite figure out whether it's just largely moving the goalposts not making enough meaningful difference in terms of the, of the ecosystem, but Tom, there just needs to be a cost. There just mm -hmm. needs to be a greater cost than what currently. Exists. Well, and that's um, Tom and I why know. I like the idea of fixing the battle reg by just removing the amount of units you could put into it. Right. Right. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you just cut, you make it so that like, so you can't battle reg drop your army with it. You're just shrinking drops, right? You're just, yeah. You're reducing drops by utilizing battle regiment. You're not actually like, Racing yes. to one. Like, yes, you should. You should be able to have like a maximum of like one hero in there, one monster, and three other units. Which is more or less exactly what I changed it to. Yep. What well, uh, I I saw that show, but I don't remember what. No, that's uh, fine. I I have no doubt we'd come to the same conclusion. Like I said, so you know, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. That's yes, because I do think the concept of controlling drops is an interesting one, 
right? That's you're you're not getting an artifact or you're not doing something else. Blah 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 blah. Cool. Like that's a that's a choice. I'm okay with that as a choice. It's sure. a cool thing. It's good for Johnny. Like there's a whole psychographic profile that really likes that. But the issue is it's not a good choice when the benefit is so huge and outweighs everything else by being a by being your whole army can almost like in, in many forces and this isn't by the way this isn't true across all armies which also leads to inequity but many competitive armies can just fit their whole force into a battle ridge and it's like if you're one of the armies that can do that what a great day for you right mm -hmm. right and if you're not sorry about your luck you don't ever get the choice <laughs> that's kind of no, I, mean, I mean i think i think that's exactly where we're at right yeah and, and whereas also, it was just like you can put in some yeah. units and so instead of taking you know, a warlord and a command entourage or something, or I don't know, whatever, you know, or, or pick your th pick your other things that are going to give yeah. you tangible benefits. Instead yeah. of picking those, you're picking to reduce your drops. Okay, well, now you made a choice, but you're not racing to one drop, right? Yeah. I know we need to move on, but the last thing on this, guys, is that, yeah, if you do that, it could also allow for more control through the Battle Tomes core battalions. So let's take Nurgle. Nurgle all a sequel, like you look at Nurgle and you think Nurgle wants to be a one drop all a sequel to have the choice of going first so that they don't get alpha pinned in their deployment. Right. Like that's kind of like a natural thought when you look at that book. May not always come up, there's plays against it, et cetera, et cetera. You can have a core battalion that allows them to take a unified battalion. So that Nurgle, sure. yeah, like that. So you, you could, if you take that approach, you could have certain factions that, you know, could use it more and exploit it less, could lead into that sure. within the battle zone. Yeah. It's just so fascinating to me because that's not something that, yeah. Anyways, right. Um, we'll have to do this another show because for Nurgle, like I, I read that book and I was like, I don't need to be one drop. I'll just not be on the okay. table. Sure, I mean, oh, you sure. just null right, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there you go. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to skip the order box. Oh, well, I'll just say it quickly. I guess here's what I'll do. Um, they changed. Marathi got better. Marathi got better. She now gets the whole spell lore. She got what the other gods have been getting. And they changed Alariel's, or their intention was to change Alariel's. Alariel always got the whole spell lore, but she got to take it with her. So like, even if she showed up in cities, yep. she had the whole spell lore. Whereas now it's, if she's in a Sylvaneth army, which is how they wanted it to work, she takes this, then she gets the whole spell lore. Otherwise, no. Right. So that's, right. they gained all spells from their lore in their own army, is what I'm meaning to say by my extra note down at the bottom there. Right. Um, They're not Nagash. Yeah, mm. right. But yes, she got Marathi got better. So I can't wait to see. We're not doing points yet. I can't wait to see what her points went up to. It's going to be exciting for us to reveal. I, I haven't looked wait. at it at all yet, so I'm sure her points went up. So we'll we'll just see what happens there. Uh, destruction. Kragnos got a new scroll. I'm not going to read this. We're going to go to the Kragnos scroll in a minute. Uh, but I'm super excited about it. Destruction Bros. Mm. Uh, yeah. it's time, baby. Now is the time, mm -hmm. uh, for the Destruction Bros to rule. Uh, Chaos, uh, couple important changes here. Archeon got a new War Scroll. We'll dig into it. But there was a real big change here for everybody who's not Slanesh, and yeah. I guess now Nurgle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, because Nurgle had this, this change through their book. Yep. And, uh, Leon, it's a, it's a joke, I know. Um, the, um... The um, the big change here is that effectively, the disciples of Zinch and Blades of Corn have now adapted to the new world that Slanesh was already mostly living in, and and uh, and that um, what do I want to say here? That that Nurgle was definitely living in, where coalition mm -hmm. units are there to be a interesting narrative piece for you if you feel like including them in your army and they're that is bad it. allies or good mm -hmm. allies yeah it's like allies. slightly better allies you get to have more of right 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 they're they're allies where there's not a you there's not the same cost yes so what i'm saying here is that what they did is they it was a two-part attack let's let's get this on the table in yep. blades of corn and disciples of zinch and he knights of slanesh right yep what they did is they, they, this is already true in the Nurgle Tome. We talked about it last week. They said, okay, everybody in these books now has this keyword. If it wasn't something you used already, like Heat Knights, right? You know how this plates a corn keyword, disciples is each keyword. 
And then they change the relevant things to say the relevant rules, like the blood tithe reward table or destiny dice or whatever, to say um, your only blades of corn or disciples of Zinch keyworded units get to use these rules. Right. And then they updated the coalition thing to say you can't benefit from allegiance abilities. Right. 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 So, if you're playing one of the god armies, now your chaos knights, your chaos sorcerer lord, your war shrines, your... I don't know, man. Pick your thing. (laughs) Mm. Okay? They don't get any of the allegiance abilities anymore. Now, I will state this was already true in Slanesh. That's why most of the Slanesh players were like, whatever. Mm. (laughs) You know, because that was already the world we lived in. Yeah. Already they didn't benefit from allegiance abilities, as it were. And obviously Nurgle's there, too. But I do think this has some ramifications uh, Mm. across the board. But Tyler, what's your take on this? What's your read on this? Yeah, we could have summarized this with a obviously no soup for you. Nice little meme would have mm-hmm. been good here. The yeah, we talked about this. Uh, you know, my bias is generally like to see f- armies on the table that reflect not only their faction for the most part, but that the variety of the model range within that faction, ideally, as opposed to you know certainly uh, Darren Watson has talked a lot about how we do have some examples of spam being incentivized. You know, this week he mentioned that maybe a lot of things are made battle line right now that should not be battle line. You know, you can literally have like, I don't know, some ridiculous number of fulminators and guard a steel soul and call that a list uh, because they can be made battle line. But yeah, I think I, I'm biased to like it. I, I get why a number of people are going to be upset about this, you know, because maybe they have a soup army and it's it's such a pattern change seemingly a pattern change on the flip side you know if we have more if slaves of darkness 3.0 looks more like stormcast 3.0 where a lot more is on the war scrolls then that you know may lessen the blow of this because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. okay. you just plug and play those war scrolls like what we're seeing right now people do in living city with fulminators or whatever in borrowing from the stormcast book sure with, with city of sigmar yeah, I mean, that's exactly kind of my frustration with the change mm. because the coalition got kicked in the... In the Ghiblis. In mm-hmm. the Ghiblis. And yet we have, like, functionally coalition existing with Cities of Sigmar, but mm. they gain keywords. So it's like coalition, but it's full army inclusion. Sure. So it's coalition, but not. And so, like, if they're going to change Coalition, I don't understand why they're not doing it for all, all of the books. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're actually just creating a disparity as to what Coalition even means. Because in Cities of Sigmar, Co- Coalition looks very different than what it does in Chaos. Sure. Sure. That's a good point. Um, and that bothers me. Mm-hmm. Um, technically, it's even weird. Like, there's a difference between Coalition units and Settler's Gain. And in, um, and in the other cities, things. Sure. Mm-hmm. Because uh, settlers gain. I don't think they gain the keywords. So it's just it's a weird, like, or maybe it's not settlers gain. Maybe it's uh, uh, the other one. Regardless, like the other non-book expansion one. Sure. But the but the point ultimately, and this is my frustration, is that they're not consistent. Okay. Mm. It's an interesting point. The city's point's interesting, because you're right. You've got Fulminators popping in and just benefiting from everything in Living Cities or whatever, right? And, yeah. and that, uh, for, for reasons that don't right. make any sense. Right. And, and mm-hmm. my, so, so let's just balance this out. Let's put this out on the scales, okay? Yep. On the one hand, over here on the positive side with Coalition stuff, yep. you have, let's call it the verisimilitude of the thing. Yep. If this is a corn army, these are corn marked knights, corn marked warriors, corn marked war shrines, whatever. And I yep. want to include them in my army and feel like they're functional because that's the army I want to make. Okay? So that's that's your weight over here on the on the on this side of the scale. On this side of the scale, you have probably the impossibility of balance if you allow this. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Because We've talked in the past, I've talked a little bit about this, 
the difference between open-ended rules and closed rules. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a closed rule can't get any better on its own based on future publications. Like the meta can shift right. around it or things like that, but it's it's a closed system. Yeah. Right. Yep. It can be better or worse in the meta. It can be that, but it will always be what's written there, and it will never right. be more it's, than what's it's ice. It's isolated. Its rules don't actually reach beyond itself. Correct. An open right. rule is something that is will be impacted based on future publications. Yes. Okay. Yep. And coalition units are by nature an open rule. Yeah. Because, okay, let's take the Nurgle book. Let's assume, so the Nurgle book has what, 23 units in it or something like that? Yep. Mm. If coalition units can benefit from everything in the Nurgle book, then they don't need to balance 23 units. They need to balance yeah. whatever. 75 or whatever. That something you can like that. 90, 100, yeah. know, depending. Right. right. Because they also have beasts and they also have, you know, Skaven and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. The lot. You explode it up to over 100 War Scrolls, right? That they suddenly yeah. have to balance. And think about, is anything going to cause a weird broken combination here? Where suddenly you're not playing in your book and what you see is spam lists of this thing. Suddenly mm-hmm. it's all gores on the table. <laughs> As if. But you get my point, right? Yeah. Now, the problem with that is, let's assume they actually could do that work, which, by the way, I don't think is possible, but let's assume they could. All right. I'll grant them that they can look across the landscape right now, take all 100 plus scrolls, and figure out exactly how to balance it so you're never trying to bust coalition. And yeah. it never becomes the default choice. Okay. And, and the spammy choice. Yep. All right. Well, then. They want to put out a new Beast of Chaos book. Again, mm. a kid. But let's all let's all imagine, right? Mm. Yep. Okay, well now they have to make sure that any change they make to that BOC book, they've got to go back and figure out how the changes they're making here are going to reflect back into the Nurgle book and back into the Corn book and back into yep. the Slanesh book and back into the Zinch book. Yep. And so the, the testing load... Which, like, look, it's not the strong suit. Mm. Okay. Just becomes way higher. Sure. And ultimately, it leads to a bad situation. Right. And this is why I think that, like, I would like to see this. My answer to your conundrum, Tom, is I'd like to see them execute some of the same stuff in cities or or whatever or in you know in, in other armies where this is happening sure. and you're just saying to cut off any possible brokenness yeah shenanigans um, now you guys yeah. look at living cities command ability right now with four fulminators we just went through this debate you know about translocation with the stormcast battle tone and generally it was agreed upon like that's a bad idea right and then so, we just wow. recreated the ability to do it in a different army in living cities, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. And yeah, so it becomes... The problem is we can't have coalition units being... Because you want to make those units good. And if they end up being... Having a better role, then they... Then they out, if they... Suddenly, for your hammer unit, you're not just looking at the two hammers in your book. You have to look across eight different hammer units. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? And make sure that somehow the Nurgle one always wins out. Right? Yeah. In yeah. the Nurgle book. And, and it's just not going to happen. No. So, my answer is, it's all all rules decisions are a double-edged sword. They come with good and bad. But I think, ultimately, this is the right choice, and I'd love to see it extended farther. It sucks for the positives over here, and I completely acknowledge the positives. You can still use those troops. They're still in there, right? So if you really um, want to include them, and by the way, sometimes those scrolls might be good enough on their own, that's exactly it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that to might be, be a the perfectly trend. functional modular piece. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Right. You could see them go, yeah, doubling down on that with the next Slaves of Darkness Battle Tome, where that'll be the case. Right. You know, the two buckets of, yeah, modular modularity, where the scroll is just finding itself, or the scroll has a function. You know, it's the Knight and Cancer with the Dispel Scroll that you want in your list to keep whomever alive or whatever from Hand right. of Portal, Hand of Death. Yeah. Yep. 
So to me, it's it's the right change, but it's a change that comes with a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it will make for a healthier ecosystem in the long run because I don't like living in the world where five armies, this is the world we lived in for a long time, where five armies, the right choice was spam marauders. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it. We we cannot ever return to the world where marauders are the best choice for all for all the armies. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now I will agree. Corn took a kicking here. Mm-hmm. Okay, like well, they have to get a new book soon. Come on, God, I hope so. They need it. Like I want that new corn book so bad. Yeah, especially after looking at the how ba- how ba- and how in how bad it's written really bad really quite quite badly i think it'd be amazing because i can't wait to see how corn looks in a world where we're writing books that actually match the theme of the army Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and and this only doubles down on the insult of not actually lifting up the lower armies like they had originally said they were going to do that's like this makes that pain a little worse yeah Mm -hmm. because they took a kicking Yep. And then got nothing in compensation. And, and that's kind of crappy. Yeah. Skull Reapers went down 10 points or whatever. Right. Yeah. And Blood Warriors down 10 points. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So there we go. Uh, like I said, we'll get to we'll get to, to Big Daddy Archeon in a moment. Death. Nagash. Big old change. <laughs> Again, they, these all have <laughs> individual scrolls. We're going to hit all of them. A lot of changes in death. The The world of death is shaking up. Martin mm. Orlando, by the way, earlier said, why was Nagash the picture? Isn't he dead? That's just Lumineth propaganda. Don't believe it. Okay. Uh, a couple other just small changes that were in the individual FAQs. The Holy Commands thing we had asked for to be cleaned up did get cleaned up. We got clear word language on that. It was good. Yep. Uh, my, tra- my, my whinging behind the scenes mm-hmm. paid off. Yep. I take a little bit of credit for that. The Drake scale armor got cleaned up. We know it doesn't work against random damage. It's only against yep. higher damage numbers. So mm-hmm. good stuff. I, I was happy to see both those clarifications. Still a couple out there that are weird. Like, you know, uh, in, in our chat, Tyler, you were discussing the uh, Aventus slash, you know, yeah. uh, Torlon. Comet Trail. Yeah, it's Comet Trail, a pulse or an aura. Uh, it's after a normal move. We don't have to get into the details of it, but it's it's open to interpretation i think that based on the wording it has to be a pulse meaning that we have i don't know if, if you guys have any examples of an aura that's written in the way that that com- that common trail is written you know like usually auras are oh, very I mean, it's conditions it's a pulse yeah yeah i mean yeah. it's there's lots of rules written as conditions like that right it's yeah. just an unusual mm-hmm. condition because it's triggered on a move but if you yeah. think about it not again think symbolic logic not the language mm-hmm. there right yeah the symbolic logic of that statement would be the same as a hundred other rules right yeah. if x condition is met then y bonus is achieved yeah yep. right. yeah okay and i tried it over four games as an aura and it sucks so like it just it feels incoherent no i mean yeah it's clearly meant to be a pulse so yeah okay uh let's get into the individual scrolls shall we gentlemen yep well and these are going to go in order of uh (laughs) these are going in a specific order you'll you'll figure it out you'll figure it out viewers uh hey look if you're a destruction bro and you haven't hit like yet and we're on kragnos you need to hit like and subscribe because this is this is a step away from just becoming a destruction bro channel i'll tell you what uh, mm. because Kragnos, I'm, I'm excited about this bad boy here. All right. Big Craggy. Uh, still basically the same stuff. But let's talk about his new stuff. Uh, still got his War Master. Still got his Bellow of Rage. Um, End of Empires. If a friendly destruction unit is wholly within 12 inches of this unit, you can attempt to charge... With that unit, if it is within 18 inches of an enemy unit instead of 12, in addition, when making a charge, roll for a friendly destruction unit fully within 12 of this unit. Roll 3d6 instead of 2d6. Oh boy. That's a... That's a big bonus. 
Oh my god. It I hope they did some play, you know, some real play testing <laughs> with a lot of armies of oh, just handing out <laughs> massive just... charge bonuses oh to all the armies. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean like let's talk about implications. Let's go down the list here, okay? Yeah. Um and talk about impacts. Let's start with the Giats. Mm. Uh, some fun stuff. I thought about like if I was going to complete the destruction entire army list, I would do a trolls army and then just yep. and have Kragnos in it and then have all my trolls charging uh, 3d6 inches because it's trolls aren't the fastest thing. So that's kind of a fun way to move them. Nope. Uh, nope. You're thinking too small, buddy. Okay. Uh, uh, you need to go with uh us uh, a squig based boing grot bounders sure. um who are doing the impact hits sure um when they come in and so that 18 inch charge is actually doing something when you land it how about tom hold on no i disagree what i need to do is go with the pie in the face army i originally discussed two years ago when we came out when we were first doing the gets review with all the Skitter Strand Arachnoroks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Little, little, those little idiots. Yep. And do they, can they still pop up? Is that still a thing they do? Some of them can, yeah. The, the, the writerless one can still ambush, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. I was pretty sure that was a thing the writerless one could do. So the key is you pop, you get like, Kragnos just needs to get like way out there. Like he just runs way out there because he doesn't care. And then you pop them all up and now they're all rolling 3d6 for their nine inch charge. And I'm into you with pie plates, mm -hmm. like yeah. all turn one. I'm just I'm I'm pie plating you. I mean, I don't I don't hate that. And um, I've got like a four model army that's going to totally lose. Or, well, I have a lot more than that. Spiders, the skitters, regular skitter strands are super cheap. Now I can have like a fifteen model okay. army of those spiders. Uh, I hear that, and I raise you an ogre army. Well, we're not now... two ogres yet. We're in gits. We're in gits right now. We're right, right but we're we're but we're just we're running we're running through the. All right, let's uh, go to ogres where it's so obvious. Yes, okay, go yes. ogres. Yeah, ogre. I raise you an ogre army that's now going to throw three d six dice, um, for impact hits. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like this makes me want to run. If they had just fixed the coherency issue to push it to six, mm. right? Yeah. That's all they needed, and. The wall of meat army of just gluttons around Kragnos, just six mm. packs of them, just running in like lunatics. Oh man, it could have been so Oof. much fun. Oof. But yes, yeah. uh, I mean, obviously, if, if you can get it on the units where you're going, where you're on the four ups, so monsters yeah. or units of eight or more, you know, obviously that's crazy, crazy, crazy impact hits for all of mm. those. Um, so for your monsters, your your monster trucks, yep. or your, uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm trying to think what else generally will breach that eight line. Probably Iron Guts, I suppose. If you take, because Iron Guts come in fours and go to eights, don't they? That sounds right off the top of my head. So anyways. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, how many bonuses to cast can you get up to in a meaningful list in a Gets army? Or a Hand of Gork, a Reliable... Whatever it's called, they're telling. I'm guessing hand of gore. Yeah, their little hand of gore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mork or whichever one. Maybe, it is. maybe that. Maybe that. Yeah. Maybe that would be a thing. Uh, I do. mean, plus two, plus three, pretty reliably. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some uh, of that's right. depending on like the moon, because the moon affects mm. that, and obviously that's not a reliable source. Um. Well, yeah. the moon is the rerolls, right? Or is that bonus? No, the moon is straight plus one. Because the original, the pot, the the Arachnorock pot is plus one. Yeah. And um and Scragrot brings his own plus one. Yeah, Scraggy has his own plus mm -hmm. one. Yes. Uh, and then mm -hmm. and then the moon could get you to plus three, and Scragrot can ma manipulate the moon. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for giants, you know, I I think fun to, like it's cool. I love it with with Sons of Bama, but the problem there likely is is that he still like this guy didn't change points. He's still seven hundred and twenty or whatever. So he's just kind of an odd points value to fit into a giant army because it's going to be him two megas and then i think like two little babies or whatever i don't i don't remember exactly uh, how it was. i forgot or one little baby yeah i i checked war score builder two gate two breakers him and a baby i think 1940 there you go yeah i think it depends and, on which ones you choose because if you if yeah. you 1940 1940 
nope, that's that's right. Yeah, it's still it's always that. Yeah. Um. So yes, it's like that's just yeah. an odd build because then you only you go from a, an army that Is normally it? has four hammers to three hammers. Well, what about the let's take the mirror match is for it what, what's the classic right now like two breakers a oh no it's it's a, like a break two great two breakers two more so megas you know yes yeah, yeah, four megas right okay so is that more likely to win against kragnos two breakers and a baby i think I so yes think, i would i would tend to think kragnos would be favored in that matchup why is why is the kragnos list not favored because I have four point. guys who could be worth 30. You have one guy who's worth, you know, potentially 30. And then two mm-hmm. other dudes. And then a guy worth 15. If we're just like Taker Drive against Taker Drive or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, but Kragnos is going to blow people up on the charge for this. On like, the charge and the 3d6 sure, charge. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking like, about. I mean, way. Kragnos would kill a giant a turn. Like, he would he would go track giants. He... Yes, depending. It like, like a he lot comes of that's in like a wrecking ball. His, role, his rampaging yeah, destruction. Yeah. Role. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If he came in on that rampaging destruction like a wrecking ball, he could lift a giant a turn. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. His other big change is he got mightiest makes rightiest. Right. Um, yep. Oh, is there any destruction arm? Oh, for Oryx, uh, for the Iron Jaws, um, could be fun. I don't think you need it. You'd be taking him instead of a. Uh, um, uh, Mega Boss on Maw Crush lately, because likely because I yeah. just, I don't know how that list fits otherwise in any reasonable way with bodies, but it could be an so, interesting option. Can can I ask the question? Is this the solution to giants? What's what do you that? Mean? Oh, that's where we're gonna go. Yes. So mightiest makes mm. rightiest. Kragnos oh, counts yeah, as yeah. thirty, then goes 25, 20, 18. So he has a diminishing obsec presence, right? Yes. Presence. Okay. Yeah. This like, is that's absolutely a question like I was going to tee up, Tom. Are we looking at the future of Sons of Bahamut? I think so. Like, I think this is the answer right here. This is a when bad answer. Like 30... I, I can tell you why this is a bad answer, but go ahead. That's fine. But I think that this is the this is the future that GW is currently exploring. Now, whether they actually trot that out or not is, you know, will we'll depend on uh, our the, will depend on what you know, ends up happening in the meta, you know, like how functional this is or not. And it'll also depend on the types of arguments that get trotted out here. Sure. Yeah. If you don't change the initial condition setting, this seems like a reasonable answer within the, within the direction we're headed. Yes. So here's why I don't like, here's why I don't love this, Tom. Sure. Um, and it's not because it makes giants weaker. I, I don't care about that at all. Um, I think they should get, I think they should get a bit of a kicking. Like, I, I just hate the way the giant book is designed. I always have, and I always will until they redesign it in a better way. Um, first of all, Kragnosis is still pretty big. <laughs> like, even at the top of his chart, he's still 18. I'm not mm-hmm. sure that's actually a meaningful diminishment in the current meta of his ability to sure. hold an objective. Sure. Like, most units aren't bigger than five right now, so, you know... Not sure what mm. 18 is still pretty good. But secondly, what this what this would incur like I'm a giant player, and let's say I've got this rule in some way. Like I go 20 sure. 15, 10, 5. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it just it you're saying it it just adds it's that uh it's that middle lever of confusion of like rather than switches, you just have a bunch of random values that now you have to double check and no, that's uh, not actually my concern, because I feel like I could internalize it. But, I mean, sure, whatever. It, it is more complexity. You're not wrong. But, no, that's not actually what my issue is, Tom. If I'm okay. a giant player, and I know if I take wounds, I get worse at holding objectives. Right. What's my incentive? To not take damage. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Right. Never fight. Fighting right. is how you lose, you lose wounds. Right. Right. Uh, and so anytime I have the option to retreat and still hold the objective, I'm going to take it. Right. Which I don't always have the option for, but I often do. Right. And by the way, now with heroic recovery working how it does, you bet I'm going to retreat so then I can heroic recovery as well. 
Okay. All this, all this chart would encourage me to do, it'd make them lose more. Sure. If that's only the goal, like let's say it went 2010, 2015, 10, 5, you know, a much more mm -hmm. sort of crushing diminishment in their ability to hold. Craggies is pretty significant still. Yeah, yeah. It does seem a little too high. Uh, if, if, yeah, and applied to Giants. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's like, this dude ain't losing objectives <laughs> in most cases. Yeah. But at any rate, what it would make me do is play a less interactive game of Warhammer, even less so than now. Giants want to win by walking up and standing as it is, but like sometimes you'll fight. Now my hard incentive would be fight as little as possible. Yeah. Like just yeah. never fight if I can avoid it. Always tow, always retreat, just period. Because fighting is how the, the fighting is how the wounds happen. Right. No, it makes sense. Yeah, it creates a really a skewed incentive structure. Right. That's the problem. If you want to change the way giants play to where they actually want to play Warhammer, you'd have to fundamentally change the rule so it's like they only get to count as some number of a lot of models if they charged or slain models in combat or something like that, right? Make it tied to them playing the game so they can't just stand still. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. So yeah. Oh, and the shield and violet now is a ward of six up. That's his other change. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, good change. Thank God it's not a five up. Question. Final question on uh, on Craggy. And With then we get to the changes, report part. Mm -hmm. Is he now worth 720 points? Will we see Craggy on the table? Uh, yes, he's worth that. 100 percent yeah yeah like in john like certainly in ogres and probably in gets he's worth it okay i think we'll we could see him in iron jaws as well you could so i was looking at a list today you you take out a cabbage you do a crag nose cabbage and uh, or channer a couple more channers you still get a good number of bodies you might just go crag nose uh, bodies but uh, yeah pro probably do a cabbage in him and you still get quite a bit yeah, I wonder yeah. if it's like, um, uh, I wonder if it's like, you don't use the the big guy, the the cabbage. Mm -hmm. You use him right. and the foot mega boss because you can still do. You still get a double. Absolutely, you know, he's still yeah. two for one as opposed to the mega boss on Mothra's is three for one. Yep, there could be something there because you can still have a lot of meat on the table. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. With that, you kind of master, build. yeah, master magic. Uh, it's reroll hand of gork, or you do the touch by wa. Yep. To tap your yeah your units for uh, D three mortals or the enemy unit if you're in range to uh, yeah generally turn on hand of Gork, yeah uh, teleport forwards within the three D six range yeah there's definitely tricks that you could probably execute with just the mega boss on foot yeah I mean three D six on like pigs and brutes seems pretty exciting to me I'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah. it sounds really exciting on particular ogres like I definitely mm -hmm. um. You know, I, you know, I think I, I, Iron Jaws are already very fast, but like Ogres, it's super exciting on because of how it works with their core mechanic. Like, I think you see them a lot yeah. in, in Ogre armies, like replace it because a lot of their other monster trucks were pretty underwhelming anyways. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so like if you were going to do a monster truck build, you could still take the Frost Lord on Stonehorn and this guy and, you know, figure out the list from there of other monster truck battle line and... Mm -hmm that like it works I, I know you can fit like the stone horn enough of those dudes or some cats or whatever for uh for a, an ambush and this and and him in there like i don't you know yeah. I, I haven't looked at the points but like, there is a list in there somewhere it's interesting i still yeah well i mean my bet would be we're gonna see a fair amount of Kragnos double breaker and a baby at 1940 and that that's gonna do pretty you know that will do well. That, that, that will be fine against the double war stop or double breaker or whatever, you know, mix and match your crack and your, and your gate breaker. Personally, I like that more, at least not looking at it on paper, than the, than the two war stomper with the, the gate breakers or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Yeah. It's, I mean, like, look, I love 3d6 charges on giants. Um, you mm -hmm. know, I ran the, I was the sort of weirdo who always ran stomper tribe. And I did so because you could get a 3d6 charge artifact on your war stomper. 
And I found it made mm-hmm. a huge difference on that guy's efficacy. Huge difference. Mm-hmm. Um, because three to six charges just let you catch people out. Yeah. You know, even yeah. if I, it, like, sometimes I'd have a short charge, six inches, and then suddenly roll, like, a 15. And it's like, whoa, my options just became real interesting as to mm-hmm. where that guy can go, right? It just opens up the door to interesting possibilities. And now the fact that yeah. you can sort of bubble that, mm, it's interesting. Yeah. That's yep. true. Krag- Kragnus is not flying, you know, he's not walking over units. So right. yeah, War Snapper could yeah, move that 15 and, and walk over, potentially get somewhere that he otherwise. Well, you can't, it's only on normal moves. You don't get to move over people on charge. I just mean oh, I like, they, I thought they fixed no, that. No, they just got rid of the restriction on, on, on uh, stupid okay. terrain being higher than four inches. The, gotcha. but the point being is that like going straight ahead versus going whoop, 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 like 15 inches around, like it's, you know, yeah. when you can do this, you can often you can oftentimes lap around people's chaff, right? When suddenly you just and like, we talk about Nagash now explode. Yes, Tom. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I'm so ready. I'm so ready for this. I understand. So I agree. Craig knows worth it at 720. I think he will show up in lists. Okay. Yeah. Bum bum bum. Mm. Big Daddy Death. Here it comes. That's right. Oh. Okay. Big Daddy had some changes. Here we They're go. The original Bone Daddy. He is. He is the Ooh. original Bone Daddy. The first, the first and foremost. Okay. Basically, a lot of the same stuff. Sixteen wounds, strip save, nine inch move, yada yada. He's Nagash. He floats around on ghosts. Get get to the hotness, Vince. Oh, hold on. I I want to talk about. It. There's some minor stuff here too. Um, his <sighs> weapon profiles changed. Uh, yeah. like he has four attacks now with Alakanesh. He used to have one. Um, four attacks on a, on a neg three rend weapon that does D six damage is actually kind of interesting. They're, they're trying to make him more effective in melee. Like that's a just, s- scary thing. Just wait till he gets the right spell lore. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I understand. And, mm. uh, so, you know, he had some, uh, his, I will say Zephyr Nebtar or whatever his other silly yep. thing is. I don't know which yep. one's which, I don't know which is the staff and which is the sword, but whatever. Um, it went from threes and threes to threes and fours. So that is a slight downgrade there at the same time. Right. Uh, yes, Autumn Lotus, we talked about coalition units. I don't think you would come down on the same side as me on this discussion, but I completely did do understand your side and hope I represented it well, I imagine. <laughs> I imagine, just from, I think, how I how well I know you at this point. Okay. Still a wizard. He's a war master. This unit can be included in... What armies, Tom? Why, Night Haunt, Flesh Eater Courts, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, or Soul Blight Grave Lords? Do you remember back when we did like a wish list? Like, it's been a while. Yeah, it's yeah. Been, like, and your number one thing was I want Nagash in my Night Haunt army. Yeah. You know, like, give me Nagash in my, my Night Haunt army, and it covers over a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It does. <laughs> it does. Now, I mean, it just makes, it makes Night Haunt, Nagash, and, and a bunch of ghosty boys. But yeah, sorry. Um, I it's like good. let's Just go let's on the record on the scroll, and then I can I'll 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 geek out about the uh, the significance here. Sure. Any any time you get excited, Tom, the rest of us get terrified. Just to go on the record, remind everybody about the context we're dealing with here. All right, continue. Okay, let's Draw. talk about the tangible changes and then how this is going to impact the way he plays. Yep. Indeed. Um. Invocation of Nagash, five different friendly summonable units or Ossiarch Bone Reapers units can heal up to three wounds. So meaning he can do those with Flesh Eater Quartz units or or with Night Haunt units or whatever. Yep. Um, he, because he can be put in those armies, however, he does not benefit from their allegiance abilities. Nagash, the Lord of Death, does not benefit from you. <laughs> you benefit from me. <laughs> okay. So he no longer gets, for example, the six up ward in the various death forces, right? Because the death forces all have like some kind of six up ward that they hand out under conditions or whatever. He doesn't get that anymore. Uh, he has his base four up ward, but it only works against mortal wounds. And it now, um, what is this? What is this? What are you, what are you talking about? Stupid thing. Okay. Uh, and as well, it, uh, what would you detect? Okay, it's still catching me fine. All right, good. I don't know why suddenly I thought I had a new audio device. How fun. Um, at any rate, uh, you know, and he still kicks back mortals and so on and so forth. 
Uh, Supreme Lord of the Undead got a big change. If this unit is on the battlefield, when you use an ability that returns slain models to a friendly death unit, you can either re-roll the dice that determines the number of slain models returned to that unit, or add one to the number of slain models that are returned to that unit. Do you know what my favorite part about that new ability is? What's that? It works on its own invocation. Sure, sure. Mm. So invocation return, returns three wounds or three wounds of models. And so let's say that you return a hex wraith, right? Which sure. is two yeah. wounds. He returns two hex wraiths to each you to up to what five different units. Correct. Right. Intended or not? <laughs> say what? Uh, intended or not? That's raw right now. Well, yeah. And like yeah. Like when we're talking like uh life swarm, right? Yeah. Um life swarm is a D three and now it's a D three plus one and it'll double tick. And so you'll return between two and four hex wraiths per life swarm cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a sizable list I've already heard about the imp potential implications of this one rule. It's getting me uh, worried. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of it, there's a lot. We're not done with his changes yet. So sure. I'm so excited. Go on. Death Magic Incarnate. Uh, this is his new command ability. So his old command ability of reroll ones and Battleshock immunity is gone. Yep. Uh, and then now instead he has you can use this command ability if this unit's on the battlefield at the start of the combat phase. This unit receives this command. Must be a different friendly death unit, so he can't do it to himself. Add right. one to ward rolls for that unit until the end of that phase. Uh, so yes. this is only in the combat phase, but in the combat phase, he can give somebody basically, uh, if they've got a six up ward, as we mentioned, all death units generally do, um, assuming that oftentimes they need to be near heroes or whatever. But if the ward is kicking, then it's suddenly a five except up. for him, he except doesn't get it. He can't do it. To, if he, well, yes, because he's not benefiting from your pit league allegiance abilities. He is beyond <laughs> them. Yes, he doesn't get a six plus death save anymore. No, he does not. He's just, and then he still has hand of dust and soul stealer. Okay, yeah. yep. so. And, and Vince and OBR, he can use RDP to do injury, that RDP. and only yeah. that. Right. Right. So, this guy Just had a lot around. of changes. Yeah. Uh, clearly, this this guy was like, <laughs> this guy's like Gandalf over here. He gets killed. Mm -hmm. He comes back. Just totally different. Oh. Uh, yeah, so. this is a consequence of him dying to right. the Lumina. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, where are we at with this guy? We're about to talk about Night Hunt. I mean, let's just go through the armies, because this is going to be the way we need to frame this, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we Tom, do Night Hunt first? Go with Night Hunt, because you're very excited. I am well, so we, excited. Sorry, okay. Tom. We, we so let's... He, lost, he lost the big thing that made him out of bounds, in my opinion, which was the command ability. Sure. The whole nonsense of real yeah. ones to say. Yeah, so one gone. battle shop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was pretty unhealthy for the game. Uh, uh, sorry, the Owen Jackson. You know what you did uh, over over this year at a lot of tournaments, uh, and good on you for it. But yeah, anyway, sorry to interrupt you, Tom. So, so what's so fascinating is that uh, <laughs> I'm really just laughing at all the people talking about Nagash showing up with only with Lady O, and be like, "Don't you ever talk to me or my daughter again like that." <laughs> Just the bring your daughter to work day. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm really no, you're enjoying good. these comments. So the reality is, is that Night Haunt has suffered from the lack of having a hammer. Yep. And it's mm -hmm. suffered from the lack of having like a big distraction carnifex like piece. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Nagash does both of those things in spades. Sure. Interestingly, he's a wonderful recipient for Mystic Shield because nothing else in the army can get it. Sure. And and so, like, it's a, it's a real interesting, like, perk that he has. So, the in my mind, there's two really kind of egregious things that happen here. One is the model restore, and we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the fact that restoring models is something that he does very well. And that Nighthaunt wants to do a lot of already between Lady O, who's restoring, if she's a general, one, per, one model per unit. Uh, you have Model Restore in the Black Coach. You have Model Restore in Lord of the Spirit Host, which is a command trait. Um, and both of those are those are actual 
model restores. Yeah, like, this is my spirit rather, lure, by the way, for the little 2d6 my, and Reichnors thing. Right, but the problem with spirit lore is that it's 2d6 wounds. I understand. Where, if you're going to use it on I, chain rasps, it's just another guy. Yes, it's one more guy. But when you use um, the Lord of the Spirit host, it's a D3 models. Mm -hmm. When yep. you use the um, Black Coach, it's a D3 models. Yep. And so on multi wound models, you're literally re like restoring multiple wounds when you do. And so you're mm -hmm. getting tons of actual gas out of it and out of him. Um, so there's just lots of really interesting combinations. But the real win here for me, the real win, is the night haunt spell lore. Mm -hmm. I was um, already leaning into like a five wizard night haunt list just because the spell lore is that friggin' ball buster. Yeah, and the fact is, is that in this new like lineup, he can be included in the army and he gets all the night haunt spells. So mm -hmm. most of you don't probably know what the night haunt spell list lineup looks like. Mm -hmm. So let me just do a brief refresher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first is Life Stealer that does mortal wounds and it heals the caster. Let me address a comment real quick here. Yeah. Um, the reason he does still get the spells is because that's up here under the wizard portion where it says if this unit is part of Night Haunt, Flesh Eater Courts, Osiric Bone Reavers, or Soulbreak Gravelords, it knows all of the spells from the spell lords in that faction's allegiance abilities in addition to the other spells it knows. So this carves an exception out of this. Out of the, of the allegiance, no benefiting allegiance. Right. And we'll talk about benefiting allegiance here in a minute. Okay, so let's return. So he has a short-range mortal wound uh, that heals himself. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Um, he has Reaping Scythe, casts on a four. <laughs> Not too shabby. Uh, he chooses a weapon. He re-rolls all hits and wounds with that weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Alakanash is on, yeah, like a three up, three up re-rolling, yeah. Re-rolling neg three d6 damage. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, Shade Mist, he chooses a Night Haunt uh, unit nearby. That Night Haunt unit is minus one to wound. We all know how good that minus one to wound ability is. How about Soul Cage? Also short range. Again, all of these spells inherently want you to be near combat. And now with Nagash, he's going to be in combat. That's the key, is you're going to throw him into combat. Mm. Um. And Soul Cage, that unit can't retreat until your next hero phase. Oh, and they strike last when they activate in the combat phase. So it's still, he now has rerolling hits and wounds, always strikes last, can neg one a wound or rend a unit, and do damage and heal himself, and we're only four of the six spells in. Yeah. Um, the next is Spectral Tether. So if there isn't a, a Night Haunt unit nearby... He can heal it a D3 wounds. So he has just a straight healing for other Night Haunt units. And then finally, Spirit Drain. My favorite underrated unit, given the presence of um, giants in the meta. Mm -hmm. Spirit Drain casts on a four, 18 inch range. You throw a dice for every wound oh. in their, in their, on yeah. their war scroll. He's got Bastion Thunderborn on a six, does a mortal. On a six does immortal. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty hot. Um, and so that's the Night Haunt spell lord that most people don't know anything about. And uh he's just like it's just so good for him because it 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 blends with what he wants to do, which is to go in and smash face. Sure. It gives him extra sur survivability, it gives him all the uh, the other things. I okay. also say the Reaper is going to make a big difference in his damage output, like huge. Oh yeah. Because as yeah. it stands right now, he's not actually that damaging. You know, right, um, right, somebody had right. said, you know, distraction carnifexes aren't actually supposed to be scary. And I would argue that, like, he's not actually that threatening in melee. Um, Normally. Like, just raw, not. just like base on the scroll. His, his damage right, is sure. okay at right. best. Like, he's not actually a super damaging piece. However, no. when the, the difference between him with reroll and hits and wounds and him normal is really big uh, as to what that's going to do to his damage output. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. mostly he was doing the work with the eight arcane bolts that he was coming in with. Yes, of course. And, and that, that's, which, that was that was always still, the majority of his damage, yes. He can still come in with a couple. Yeah. Right? Like, he can still come in with five and have a bunch of these other spells online. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's the egregious part of this. Or the fact that, like, if he's paired with uh, Lady O, 
her spell gives an enemy unit minus one to hit, and all units attacking that plus one to hit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now he's on, and if he minus hour, he's on twos and twos rerollable. Sure. I mean, again, it's take your daughter to work day for sure with him. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, do so you hold wanna, on. Do we want to talk about the Emerald Host question? Because people are already discussing it in the chat, Tom. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things that I pointed out, like right when this dropped um, on the WhatsApp and our private chats and stuff like that, one of the things that I noticed was that when you read the Emerald Host, there's an ability that hex wraiths are granted that allows them to intercept damage for nearby generals. Mm -hmm. Nagash is a general when he's included in any Nighthawk army. Okay. And so on my read of the ability currently, um, it, it allows the hex race to intercept damage for him, which means that hex rates would grant him a two plus bodyguard. Yeah, so the question here becomes, like, this is definitely an FAQ question because I've seen people arguing it both ways, and I understand yep. both sides of this argument. Yep. Because it clearly says Nagash cannot benefit from Allegiance abilities, but the Allegiance yep. ability is affecting the Hex Wraiths and granting them an ability to bodyguard for the general, which yep. he is. Yep. Okay. And yep. so the question then becomes, does that get around it, or is it, or is that meant to be... You know, yes or no. Look, I can read yep. it both ways. I get both arguments. I don't think it's clear. I think it's an FAQ. It's that simple. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I agree. Mean, like, like, guys, guys, this ultimately shouldn't matter. Like, we all know for the health of the game what the answer has to be. What? That, <laughs> that is fair. That night haunt, that, hold on, that Nagash needs to be on a two up, a two up, <laughs> uh, word save. Clearly, like, <laughs> I, I, I think that that's the right answer here, right? For the oh, health of the game, he should. He's the great salvation of <laughs> of Nikon. He's no, half he... of your army. Thank Indeed. you, Tyler, for bringing us back to reality. Yeah. The like, I understand the argument both sides. I totally get it. There is no logic you are going to be able to use here to say this is definitely the way it is. No need to FAQ it. I've got the answer. No, that's not how this works. Well. Both sides have perfectly logical arguments, sure. and I agree that Raw, right now, leans toward Tom's interpretation. But I can also see that they clearly wrote in here pretty strongly he doesn't get to benefit from allegiance abilities and had an intention with that. So let's just get the FAQ. Right. And then we'll, we're good. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because the reality is, is that, like, we are talking about a Nagash who would be on, like, a two-up or a one-up. With a, with the various bonuses, awe, defense, mystic yeah, yeah. shield, mystic shield, and blah, 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 the whole blah, blah, blah. deal, yeah, and then also on a two up ward functionally from the bodyguard, where he's just where he's just automatically just dropping hex wraiths back in his bodyguard unit every turn. Returning well, yeah, yeah he can return yeah. like well, you could run like two hex wraith units around him. I understand, right? And alternate units as to who's eating the wounds. Yep. And then he just refills the whole unit back. And then like, he just boom, refills boom, all boom, the units. Because he's going to restore two to three hex rates per turn to those. Yes. Easy. He, like, automatically, he does without Lady O triggering her command ability. Right. Correct. Which now and she returns two, two hexes per unit. Yeah, I understand. So automatically, on one command point, between the two of them, you can put four hexes back in a, a unit. So if you don't kill out the unit of five, they will refill that unit every hero phase. Right. Yep. And, like, that's not healthy <laughs> for the game, right? We all get that. Well, if this doesn't get corrected, I may be taking this to an event in a month. <laughs> well, I think you'll do just fine without it. <laughs> With new Nagash. And, and, and ultimately, like Tyler, I agree. It's still really good if those yeah. hexes are just bodyguarding Olander. Sure. Right? Yeah, like, sure. like, let's... Let, Let's be perfectly honest here. The other reality is, is that Nagash gains some vulnerability to mortal wounds. Well, actually, no, he doesn't. He gains some vulnerability to rend. Yeah. Because mortal wounds, he's right. still on the four up board. Right. right. Yeah. The the losing the deathless set. That's it. Goes back to the amulet of destiny yeah. discussion that we had. He's got the four up. He's got what he needs. He's got the next skills. He's good to go. He did that right. Yeah. So. When I look at Nagash and a number of these, uh, I just like, oh, okay, that's why we have shooting in this game. I mean, this guy is going to be a nightmare for a lot of melee armies with, with what he can do. 
I mean, a lot well, of he's, he's going to lock there. people down. And then he's yeah. going to hit them with the no retreat spell. And he's going to be like, suck right. it. You're yeah, here yeah. for the rest of the game. Yeah. He's going to blast them with, yeah, like, yeah, fulminators. Sure. Have, you know, like, probably he's, he'll be fine. He's going to blast them with, you know, how many mortal wounds did you just do to me at the start of the combat phase? Awesome. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I mean, I thought the community, we were way down on the gash events. I, I said this early on for whatever the hell that's worth. That we were underestimating him. We were talking about Nagash is too high. And, you know, sure, he hasn't been blowing up the scene, but in the hands of talented players, my God, he's been amazing. All right. And so let's keep guy, going. Let's keep going like, through the armies. Because I agree. All right. In Night oh, yeah. Haunt, big winner. The ghosty yeah. boys are here. <laughs> yeah. Right? Just in time for Christmas. Uh, they're here to, to Nagash is, is shepherding his ghosts in to come visit you and teach you lessons about uh, how you should have respected them more. Yeah. Okay. And yes, Nagash has always had the monster keyword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, he's yes, he's huge. Okay, let's talk about him in Flesh Eater Courts. Anything he's doing here? Let's see. I need to look at the spell lore. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the only I mean, magic would be in the spell lore itself because, like, none of the, none of the other incidental things is going to actually be interesting to him unholy vitality he could make right that's the five up mm -hmm. ward mm -hmm. he could make that a four up on a on a on a g cod on a gulking on terror guys sure he could pretty good pretty good yeah I, i'm gonna give you my yeah. honest answer here i don't think he does almost anything in that army i think he's just too expensive like the the key with the key with night haunt is that there's just enough bodies like they don't have anything else so that he's not competing for actual key elements in the army right mm -hmm. here you already have big monsters that i right. guess theoretically are still okay right and like they they like you still have terror guys that can double pile in and mortal wound bite and reroll the the hits on all those those bites right mm -hmm. like he's competing with those things in those spaces and I'm not sure that he wins that fight because he doesn't get to double pile in. He doesn't get to do the mortal wounds like that. Right. Maybe. He has Spectral Host. He could, so he's a 9-inch move. Spectral Host. Uh, Cast Valley 10. That's pretty reliable with him. Now he can run and charge. Or sorry, Cast Valley 10 allows you to do it on three units. So you could do it on him. He can run and charge. He can run and charge up to three units. But he would be a 9. I'll run a 6. That's 15. I'll say charge roll after that. That's not too bad. It can, you know, pretty good threat range in combat. I think I mean, there's a few not... things he could do. Like, that yeah. faction's in a pretty bad place. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that it's not actually a good call to put him in there, is my honest answer. Like, maybe he'll do better because he's he's not relying on all the broken, non-overlapping, like, the, all the non-bows that are, that are getting caught up. So, like, mm -hmm. yes, you could make a giant unit of ghouls with, like, a four-up ward save or whatever. You know, something like that. I mean, deranged transformation would let him shoot across the battlefield. Sure. Um, because because you could add the wounds characteristic to the move, and so he's going to add what? Um, no, there's a limitation on deranged transformation. I'm I'm literally reading it. Pick one friendly unit uh, with a wounds care. Oh, up up to six. Never mind. Yeah, yes, correct. No, he's just bad. No, yeah, I mean, bad. like, I, that's, deranged transformation is for, like, um, you know, you, you put that foot, on, like, your, your knights, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think he does enough in Flesh Eaters. Simple answer. It's it's not, you, the reason why he's good in Night Haunt, because as you said, he solves challenges that that army had, right? They didn't that have bench. hammers or big monster heroes or things that wanted to go tussle like that. Yeah. And... Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, unholy vitality is. I was thinking it was part of the spell lore. It's not. It's on the. It's on the G cod itself. Oh yeah, you're right. right. It is. It is. That's that's the other trick. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. A lot of the good spells you want to cast are on the scrolls. Yeah. So the regular Ghoul right. King, the Arch Regent. The you're absolutely right. Yes, that is his spell. How could I forget? Probably because I don't run. I actually don't run Kumquats in my army, so I don't didn't remember that off the top of my head. Um, no. But like a lot, the, the spells you want to cast are usually on the scroll itself. And he's uh, getting access to like their completely average spell lore. Um, yeah, I mean, you could run him in the one sub faction that's all ghouls, right? 
like uh, all the bottom Morgant or whatever it is Morgant, and just have him keep refilling all those masses of ghouls maybe there might be something to that i'd have to go look mm, yeah. if if there is a play it's something like that okay all right uh obr bone daddies is this the big loser yes because he now doesn't play the rdp game anymore he basically doesn't play with the like the army has a set of unique rules and then he has a set of rules and these two don't really meet <laughs> like don't. he can't do the plus three movement he can't do he can't access any of their rdp abilities right right and he's just not really playing their game i mean yeah he can you know he can do he can put models back in their unit or whatever right um like with it he can do his three wound restore yeah um the, it, i mean it, it raises a question okay and the question revolves completely around supreme lord of the undead yeah all right i'm gonna bring up the exact text because i need to get this right yeah goth is our harvester <laughs> Mm. roll a dice yep. each time a model is slain within three inches of any models with this ability on a four plus you can pick one friendly ocr bone reapers unit within six inches of this model if you do so and the slain's model had a wounds characteristic of four or less you can heal one wound allocated to that unit if the slain model wounds got just blah 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 right if there are no wounds allocated to the unit you can uh you pick you can return a number of slain models to that unit with a combined wounds characteristic that is equal to or less than the number of wounds you could have healed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the question is, um, how is that working with the Harvester? One, mm -hmm. is he letting you re-roll the four up? I don't think so, because it's not no. re-rolling the number of slain models returned right. to the unit. But yeah, it's, he's you're not you're not doing that to the wounds, which is was the was the mm -hmm. which is what the what it's keyed off of. Right. But the way that this ability works, right? Right. Um is that like you you just pop little skeletons back on there, right? You're just putting back little bone right. daddies. So do I get to go like one, two, one? two every time i yeah. get the four up do i get two back yes right? because i'm rolling it each time yes which means that he breaks it right does does he send us back into the dark days of when harvesters could double tap right, right. yes and so now you move back into full-on crematorium blowing up skeletons and just let let the grind begin sure where he's just like they kill it and then it like you just you just for every four you roll you get two skeletons back to you know two bone daddy boys yep. back and and then so you're just almost always basically refilling your entire unit and you're oh, just yeah. literally using something like crematorians to just melt people's face with weird mortal wound kickbacks yeah. yeah yeah i mean like that's if there's a build with nagash in obr now that's what it is yes uh, and yeah, Phalanx one six seven. Yes, he can activate his command ability with RDP. They specifically say that in the OBR FAQ. It's the only thing he can do with RDP, but he can do that. Right. Okay. I. Uh, so I think that's um, interesting. <laughs> like because <laughs> if you don't have shooting to bring down the harvester. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that unit becomes immortal. Yes, it does. Uh, Sammy, no, he does not get the six plus base ward because he doesn't get the allegiance abilities of the individual armies. He has his armor save and his four up against mortals, but he doesn't get any army six plus. He is not a deathless minion. He's the Lord of death. Um, <laughs> Indeed. And so that's the only angle I could figure out with OBR. I think the traditional OBR Nagash build is dead. Yeah. So because it's you're not able to double up with like so you put the five up ward on a unit of Mortec Guard, you're not able to then do an extra rend, right? From another source. 
Because it's, I was, you know, the ways that they, oh, I can't remember they how they do their, it. their thing. Yeah, you're, like talking about the, you know, you're talking about the neg one rend versus the, what, what are you talking about? Well, the, like the Hecatos, is it the Hecatos does a command ability to either do plus one save or plus one rend? I'm forgetting what it was, the thing that yeah, it either makes them more punchy or more durable. I didn't know that. Elite can... ability to ignore rend? Uh, that was part of it, but I think, the, don't they have a way to get plus one to save? I was thinking to OBR units uh, through an RDP. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I haven't the, played that army in person. Yeah, sure. The issue once. here is that he because he can use his command ability and that command ability only, he loses mm. all out attack. He loses all out defense. Yeah. He can't yeah. rally anything. He can't, you know, like he becomes this weird island piece, right? Mm. That isn't really accessing the rules of the army. That's the problem. The definitely the army he works the worst in now is OBR, right? Yep. Um, okay, Phalanx, Adam. Yeah, thanks, guys. I couldn't remember the details on that. You could right. not... Yeah, okay. Yeah, real saves through shield wall. You cannot... All right, cool. Yep. All right, I was hoping you could not, but I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's ironic because, yes, he... As the ultimate Bone Daddy himself, he's now the worst in Bone Daddies. But, I mean, you know, OBR is another one of those those books that just feels like, boy, do they need a redesign from the ground up. You know, like, they're just yeah. not... It, they they have like this weird um like <laughs> switzerland has a completely like unique plug it's different than the base of the rest of the eu which is really annoying mm. and that's what that's what they are right they're like the weird swiss wall socket to the, to yeah. the eu standard of 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 mm. uh of, of the rest of the game in three right. i mean the the real problem here is that RDP just doesn't need to exist because that's how all command points actually work now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is that is that what we need to just acknowledge? Probably is that is that OBR was the Book of Nine Swords for yes um, for Warhammer that, that was introducing mechanics of the next yes. edition before that yes. edition dropped, and and now they should just have like. They use command points, and but then they have limits on what they can do with command points, and so on and so forth. Like that's it, yeah. and then everything's just normal. Okay, last army, soul bright, soul blight, grave lords. How's he working? Hello, here? hello zombie, <laughs> zombie horde. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, all the zombies. And so, would this thing work on the skeletons, allowing you to reroll? You know how you want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about skellies. it. Yeah. I, I, yes. I understand Switzerland is not in the EU. I, I get that because they're neutral and stuff. I'm just saying, like, it's an it's a thing. It should they shouldn't need to be in the political body to decide to standardize their wall plugs. But anyways, okay. Um, let's read the ability again, and then we'll read Death Rattle Skeletons. Okay. So, yep. You can either re-roll the dice that determines the number of slain models returned. Okay. Mm. Here is the Skeletal Legion ability. Verbatim. When you pick this unit to fight, roll a dice for each model in the unit that was slain in that phase. On a 4+, plus, you can return that model to this unit. <laughs> Wild. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yep. So, a couple of things are happening here, right? Yep. Is this an ability that determines the number of slain models returned to the unit? No. No. Well, let me let me let me put out the facetious argument for it, Tom. You ready? Yeah. It is because I'm returning one or zero every time I roll it. <laughs> Here, let let me let me let me say that it, it absolutely doesn't matter. I agree with you because where you're gonna go next. Go ahead. Just take the wall. The way that Nagash's Supreme Lord is worded, you get to always choose which of those two effects you want. Correct. How's it that? doesn't say re-roll this. If it doesn't, if it doesn't have a roll, then add one model. Right. It just says either do this or this. Right. Uh, I agree with okay. you. This, this. I just wanted to walk through all of this to get to this point, right. Tom. Because yeah, I but at the end of the day, that it doesn't even matter. Right. Right. It doesn't actually mm -hmm. matter because. Like, I wanted to walk people through this math, okay? Right. Exactly why it doesn't work. 
because getting one you will get one additional skeleton <laughs> right right Did it, and so is it so let's get to the next part here tom every four plus gives me back a skeleton does this plus one trigger to every four plus that returns a skeleton? Okay. Or does yeah. it trigger to the whole lot plus one? No. Because because you make an individual die roll for each for each triggering effect, which is a model die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like so so you're so you're you're checking for every single model. Mm -hmm. You're not saying roll dice equal to how many models have been slain that's not how it's worded if it was worded roll dice equal to x then for each four plus in that lot then you add one skeleton well i'll read it again yeah when you pick this unit to fight roll a dice for each model in this unit that was slain in that phase yeah it's On but a it's four plus you can return that model to this unit so it's triggering individually mm -hmm. It's creating a dice pool collectively. It do, it doesn't work for that ability then. Okay. And the reason why it doesn't work reading it that way is because you return that model. And you don't think you then get to add one more model to that? No, because each model is only one that model. Yes, but I've restored a slain model. Right? right, I fulfilled that requirement, and so hence, right. But it's I then telling you the what kind of model of you can. Slain models? No, it, it's telling you what kind of model you can return. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's imagine a world where um, you're you're like you had an ability that returned a champion or a musician. Yep. Right. You can't add another model that's not that type of model. Sure. And that mm -hmm. ability is specifically delimiting what is added because it's that model yeah i tend to i actually agree with your final reading but here's yeah. what we're gonna like ultimately this is gonna get faq to just be plus one <laughs> to sure. the lot like this is another one that's gonna need an faq and what's gonna get um, faq is no you can't re-roll the four plus or it doesn't work and and like at best it gives you one more guy right that's what's gonna or it happen. doesn't work right. now zombies let's talk about zombies Mm. Okay. Because zombies add to their number when they eat people. Is that right? Well, yeah. the 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 reason that the that the reroll doesn't work is because it's not the roll of a dice that determines the number of slain right. models. Right. Right. Uh, it's not meeting that criteria. Like, right. I understand people yeah. stretching it to say it is. But like, and that would—it's not that that wouldn't be interesting. Skeletons might become a really good, really, really good tarpet then because they will just self-refill every round, right? Yeah, you'd still have to have inspiring presence for them because you're gonna, you're still losing dudes. But sure, yeah. okay. So Zombros, that's who you're talking about here. Okay. Yep. The newly dead. Uh, in addition, at the end of the combat phase, you can roll a die for each enemy model that was slain by wounds inflicted by this unit's attacks in that phase. For each two plus, you can add one Dead Walker zombie model to this unit. Okay. So this, for each two plus, you're going to add two Dead Walker zombie models okay. based on how Why? that's worded. Because it's not saying because that model? That's exactly right. Because you're you're rolling for each loss. Mm -hmm. And each loss then is generating one model, right? See, or I no, think actually, the ability... No. no, you're right. This is, no, this is a model... This is not a return. Right. Right? Because the, the specific ability of Nagash says it has to be a return, right? Returning a slain model. Yes. You're adding yep. people to the unit. Yep. So, no, it doesn't work for that at all because you're adding people to the unit. There we go. Yes, correct. Yeah. Which will, by the way, also be FAQ. Like, it should, just to clean these things up because people will not get this. You're just yeah. adding to the unit, hence why it's not right. doing anything. Yes. Right. Correct. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I wanted to walk through both of those because I think yeah, I had to walk through the logic of it. But yes, that's yeah, you're adding, you're not returning. Yep, like it's a complicated interaction. Right. 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 Both of these are, um, and so I thought it was worth really stepping through all of the logic, even though I knew where we were going to end up. <laughs> but like, sure. 
-hmm. you know, it's it's still yeah, worth going. I, I haven't steps. processed all of these other armies. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's fine. Yeah. And this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this in real time, so we walked through all the different yep. elements. Yep. Of yes, yep. it, I agree with you on both. I think for for skeletons, it will just be FAQ to say you get one more. Okay, right. regardless of right. how it's worded, that's what they'll say. I think for zombies, they'll say it doesn't do anything because you're not returning, you're adding to the unit. Yep. So it's not returning yep. a slain model. And yep. there you go. I mean, he can still, he can he can do his invocation of Nagash, obviously. Right. Yep. <laughs> CW says, oh boy, more things I'll need to walk my soul blight opponents through. Yes, indeed. I mean, the answer is you just don't take Nagash. Yeah, I don't, I think, again, this, I don't know how much purpose he has in soul blight. There's a lot of already, like, real Chad heroes in Soul Blight um, that probably don't care. Like, that, that, right. that you could get, like, two of any of them for one Does of them. Do you have any spell lores that are bombastic in Soul, soul Blight? Uh, I mean, he'd be he'd be taking the Necromancer spell lore, which is a good spell lore. Yeah. The Vampire and... spell lore is complete garbage. The yeah. Necromancer spell lore is quite quite good. He, he would get a, a, a really good spell lore. Yep. And and be a great delivery mechanism for them, by the way. Because a lot of them are quite good debuffs, but they're very short range. And you don't generally want to have necromancers often in range to be able to do them, but Nagash is obviously much less scared of being close to the enemy. Alright, and yeah, the Lord of the Death Mages is real good. Okay. Have we beat Nagash to death? Is he sure. and the dead horse he rode in on now dead? Nagash, I've hated him since 1997 or something, when my mm. one of my first opponents tried to claim that he could take Nagash in the old whatever 4th or 5th edition book and put him on a skeletal horse, and because he was <laughs> ethereal, he could hide him in a hill. I'm like, none of that Brilliant. is correct. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Archaon. Big boy Archaon. All right. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> These have been in order of decreasing excitement, by the way. Yes. Well, no, that's not true. Like, uh, Kragnos is like, yeah. Oh, no, I'm definitely, Nagash Kragnos is, is definitely yeah. more exciting overall than Nagash. You just are very biased, Mr. Nighthaunt player. I'm pretty sure if I slotted an OBR player into your position, they would f feel quite the opposite. But I'm just saying that, like, for Archeon, like, he had a lot of functionality, and now, like, it feels like they've just taken all that away. Okay. So, Archeon, what's his big change? His big change is now he doesn't benefit from Allegiance abilities. Yep. Like, that's it. That's the big change. Yep. That's the story. No more destiny. No more destiny dies to auto slayer of kings, a hero. Yep. He did uh, lose he, the he, heat knight keyword as well. By the way, he actually well, used he to have the, the heat knight keyword, so he could benefit from the slanesh. Well, he can abilities. get slaves of darkness allegiance abilities. Yeah, sure. No, no, that's that's correct. I'm talking about in the god armies. Yeah. Right. Um, he is. He can no longer benefit from their allegiance abilities. That's it. Yep. It was a weird exception before that he could do it in Slanesh, like because yep. because he sort of like he could take everybody else's, but he sort of somehow snuck into Slanesh by having the Heed Knight keyword. Yep. Mm. Um, yes, I agree. <laughs> Assistant ref said Archeon gave up on his hedonism. He's embracing clean living and moderation. Boring. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're slaves to darkness, this is you know he's still good. The only other notable change is that the armor of Morkar now uh, you have to. He reflects his mortals to a unit within uh, three inches. So, like, if you shoot at him, he used to be able to bounce the mortal way back to you, right? From yeah. just a mile away. He can't do that anymore. If you shoot at him, he can still reflect the shooting mortals, but he reflects them onto somebody within three inches. So somebody has to be there. Okay. Uh, he also lost his um, see the future thing. The turn priority nonsense. Um. Okay. He lost that a while ago, didn't he? No. Uh, but that's still isn't that a slaves of darkness thing? A host of the ever chosen. Is that in host? Am I misremembering? Maybe it's in host. Yeah. 
pretty I never played Host of the Ever Chosen, so I don't remember. The last time I read those rules was a while back. Yeah, somebody can correct us otherwise, but I think That's so. Fine. Either way, um, yeah, so, oh, and his By My Will can now go on any Chaos thing. So it's a, he can command them, but they don't get to, basically, he doesn't, again, with all these dudes, they try, they're trying to, like, you can see completely narratively what they're trying to do, right? They're elevating them above any of the individual armies. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, thank you. Dark Prophecy is S2D. Okay, excellent. Thank you, John. Okay. Great. Um, so he can now make any Chaos people, uh, fight on death in the mm -hmm. right cool he yeah, can Scar command Brand them was, they uh, can't benefit was the first him. thought yeah you guys think of anything else that would be interesting Scarbrand was obviously the one that came to mind. I mean that's an expensive army and two models right sure. there so I don't know how how much you're going to get out of that but I mean he's a super modular piece as it is the, I yeah. think the thing we can all celebrate is that you can no longer destiny dice the sword yeah. Right. Right? Right. Because that was dumb. So, yep. yay. <laughs> that got <laughs> fixed. Good. You know, I think if you're taking him in one of the God-marked armies now, you're doing it because you want to play with Archeon. Yeah. Right. That's right. it. And he's a big modular piece, and you think he'll fill the role of a basic utility you know, hammer you know, and do something point, interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah, Fight on Death with, with Scarbrand is, is a funny combination. I, you know, I hope that isn't functional very much longer. Not because they ever ban it, but because they redo the corn book. And mm -hmm. um, and Scarbrand actually gets so awesome that he's worth, like, 500 points. Is where he, he should be at the top end of the Greater Demon. As I've said, Greater Demon should all be costed between four and 500 points. And he should be, like, um, 495 and worth that. And so you just never did it because it was too expensive to put both of them in an army. You understand what I'm saying? Like not, I don't like want to shut top, it off. I just, functional. I want to see Scarbrand be so amazing. He's worth 490 points. <laughs> That's what I right. want. Certainly. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay, cool. I mean, he's a big dude. He's a lot of points. He did go up. We'll talk about points in a second. He went up a little, yep. I mean, it's probably the least interesting change, right? Because yep. now he's just not going to show up in these other armies anymore in a, in a competitive sense. Um, right. He's there narratively right. if you want to do it. And that's it. Yeah. That's the shooting. So, okay. So let's take Archeon and Nagash. Well, we could take all three. Oh, do you guys, which, or let's just run it out. Which God level character is most reflective of the ideal? In terms of where they stand and their attractiveness for competitive play, you know, is it, or maybe we just limit it to these three in our sense of what these three are going to look like going forward. Sure. Which is of these Archeon, three is the most attractive for competitive play? That's your question, right? Most, yeah, most attractive. No, no, no. Which, which is the healthiest? Okay. For the ecosystem. Okay. Sure. Because I think a lot of people are going to feel like Archeon has gotten toned way down from where we were, you know, like start of 2020, let's say, or originally start of 3.0. He was, yeah, he was good till end of 2020 or till end of 2.0. He really got turned on 3.0. He was all over the place. Zinch Archeon, a little bit of Corn Archeon. Now we're in a quite different world going forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, kind of what, what do we think is re best reflective of the ideal from a health standpoint for the game with these God level characters? It's a good um, question. Yeah. Tom, do you have a yeah. do you have a take? Um I think that Archeon's probably the most balanced. Mm. Uh I think that you'll see Nagash the least. Because really? nobody plays Night Haunt, is that your argument? Where well, he's best? I mean because like he's only gonna be good in Night Haunt. Hmm. Everything else, he's just not that stellar. Like, maybe a skew build of Flesh Eater Hordes, right? Mm. And then maybe a skew build of Soul Blight, but even then, he has no good synergies there. That's what we just demonstrated, right? Mm -hmm. sure. And so, ultimately, there's just not a lot of... Like, he, you're just not going to see him. 
unless you bump up against the night haunt army and then i think he's going to be an every night haunt army moving forward competitively sure mm. i are uh, um, uh, here's what i'll say tyler i think archeon's probably the ideal I think we're actually yeah. overweighted on Kragnos right now. Like he his yeah, I think so. his utility is so strong. Like it's such a powerful yeah. ability. He's just pulsing out yeah. to everybody. Yeah. yeah. I think Archeon works really well in his own force. I mean, part of the problem is Kragnos doesn't have his own army. He right. has nowhere to go. Right. And right? so he has to he has to be lucrative enough in his abilities to appeal to all the okay, uh, the destruction. Right. It's this weird place like Archeon is this standout because he actually has his own force, right? Like, right, Slaves to Darkness he's are his army. Up. Nagash right, doesn't can... technically have an army. Um, did he lose... You know, both Nagash... And, I mean, Kragnos really doesn't have an army. You could argue, like, Bone Reapers were made in, Nagash, in Nagash's image or aesthetic or something, right? But he's not actually part of any one of them. Do we have... Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I guess the problem is is that any of the armies that he used to gain the keywords for, it doesn't matter because his War Scroll now trumps the fact that they he eliminated can't... all that text from the yeah. any FAQs. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, Archeon ideally, I think, is the right answer because he is has a fully functioning role in his original force. Mm -hmm. He's a nice splash that has benefit, but doesn't dominate any of the other armies. The reality is is that both Kragnos and Nagash are supplanting what's native in those other armies mm -hmm. and warping the meta of those armies around him. Yeah, to varying degrees, right? Depending on the to army. To varying degrees. Yeah. Kragnos, obviously, is much more widespread, much more sweeping, and his ability is just so good in, in, in uh, Ogres. I don't see... Yeah. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. I see... His presence in Ogres, like Nagash's presence in Night Haunt. Like, if you're going to run that army, you're going to run him. Sure. Mm -hmm. Just because 3 to 6 charging with your monster trucks is really strong. Turns right. out. Well, yeah, like, and, and all the mortal wounds, right? All the like, mortal wounds. He himself does a bunch of the charge. He's now got Mightiest Makes Rightiest, so he's more objective capture in your in your monster truck obsec army, right? So, yeah. He, he, like, he plays into that really, really well. Really, really well, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I think Ogres are the right move for him. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's Archeon. I, I wish we had more discussion about the, the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse, but, you know. He's that fine. Is, he is what he is. It's fine. So, there you go. Uh, okay. Points. Gentlemen, let's talk points. All right. So, here's our point sheet. Here they are. They're all here. And we're not going to look at this for more than like three seconds. Because what we're going to go to instead is this point sheet right here. Mm -hmm. that shows the changes. Uh, this was put together. I apologize. I do not remember who put this together. They shared it out on Twitter. Let me find them real quick while we're talking. So while I'm looking, uh, I'm going to ask you, Tyler, to start us off. Because we're not going to go scroll by scroll here but on this first page okay so this is the first half cities dog fire slayers idneth caradron lumineth seraphon fec night on obr soul blight gloom spite ogres oryx and sons of behemoth what grabbed your attention yeah so let's start with salamanders i mean it's nice to see that they went up a little bit uh, i think they probably could use plus 30 they got plus 20 120 to 140 so we had Ridge on recently. Ridge took out uh, which event? He took out uh, Josh's event, Boys, with his Seraphon. And he had three packs. He had a Bastilodon. So that would be 60. Basties went up 15, so 75 point increase. And so, yeah, that'll have a little bit of impact. Not a lot, but that's decent. Uh, Jonathan Straw, uh, by the way, as we put this together. So thank you, Jonathan. Okay. There yes. We found it. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, they got a little bit of an uptick. I think Seraphon players will fill it a little bit. Arguably, could have been a little bit more on the Salamanders. Uh, yeah, we'll start with that one. Okay. Tom? Uh, Fire Slayer changes were to a bunch of foot heroes that no one has ever played. Sure. <laughs> 
I think the Volkite could have came down a little bit. Volkite Berserkers, that would have been a mm -hmm. meaningful change. No, you can't fix the army. Mm -hmm. That yeah, army is unfixable a, now a point because mm -hmm. it is a army of almost wholly um, 32 mil base uh, models with one inch reach. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's it's because of coherency, the army's done. Hmm. I've seen it do pretty well. I mean, obviously, it's still a lot of people are not playing it, but yeah, I don't. Know. I think it's still in the middle, in the middle, middle. Yeah, it it, it to me, yeah. yeah, that it feels like a but a real like, middle army. But I mean, it's still very capable of winning games. From what it's I've seen, it's capable least. of winning games because you can pile a bunch of meat onto objectives. I but hard to, yeah. Yeah, it's it's hard to shift, but at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, the real challenge is it's it has all the limitations that it's always had. Mm -hmm. Low mobility, low bodies now because of the changes, and it's it's limited on uh, reach, and mm -hmm. it and the amulet save uh, moved the um, the magfather. Uh, back off the table of competitive, like of, of of a good competitive option because he's not survivable anymore. Mm. Okay. Um. So, uh, so the fire changes were womp womp womp, and in general, like that's what we see down this whole column, right? Mm -hmm. Like most of the changes are just they're they're not moving the needle on anything that's function. Like, let me say this: a lot of these, the points aren't the issue. There are larger, wider sweeping issues with these with these armies that the points just can't address. Like I look at the KO list and I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like sky wardens at one Oh five, that's where they should be points wise comparatively, but there's problems that those units have like fundamentally mm -hmm. because they are 32 mil uh, units that will reinforce from three to six models. Like, you can't build... There's not enough reinforcement points to actually, like, make real units there. Let alone the fact that you can't even get above 10 anymore. Sure. Which is where you need to be to uh, to, to actually get Aether Gold in the army. And so, mm -hmm. like, there's just functionally, like... It, it's a misunderstanding of how that army's supposed to play. Um, and then things like the Endron Master with Endron Harder, so the foot Endron Master, 95 makes him interesting mm -hmm. for a melee boat. And that's the only function you'll ever see him in is with a bunch of other melee heroes in a boat. So, I mean, it just, um, and then the, it, the inner master derivable suit went down. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a model that I use. Yeah. Um, but that's the only one on that entire list that actually gets use. And I think yeah. that that is the story of this, this change is that a couple there's, I could probably pick this, the seven units here where the point increases were meaningful and then almost all of the decreases were just nonsensical or they're mm -hmm. not nonsensical. They are, they are unimpactful. Yeah. Okay. I think you're, I think you hit on exactly where I want to go, Tom. Let me bring this up a level. Let's, let's get this yeah. into the meta level. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. is this yep. points. First of all, we should have never moved to five point increments. That's comical. I'm just going to, mm. I'm not, that's right. I'm not going to let that die because it's the <laughs> stupidest thing. One. Two. Points are the worst way possible to fix something. Okay? Because many, 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 many things will never get played because they fundamentally have either a bad scroll or have no role. And that's it. Yeah. There is no points you can reasonably put them at where they will be selected. Like, yeah. sure, you move all these units down to 20 points or something. Yeah, sure, people spam the crap out of them, but you can't do that. That's obviously nonsense, right? There's yeah. no reasonable points value where you can paper over. You got a giant pothole in the middle of the street. There's a sinkhole in the middle of the street. I can't go out there. Points are just wallpaper. I can't go out there and literally just roll some wallpaper over the street and expect cars to drive over it. Mm. Okay, they're going to fall in the hole. Yep. It's not enough strength to support what you need to actually do. That's point like two. Like that avatar of Kane. Sure. Oh, disagree with you there, buddy. But sure. I, I yeah. You could pick anything. No. Pick the Saigor or whatever yeah. if you want to completely yeah. if you want a completely unambiguous example. All right. Yeah. 
Right. Three. Points need to stop. Like, this way we look at the change is mathematically correct and functionally wrong. Okay? Because what I mean by that is 10 points on a hero I'm going to take one of literally means nothing. Nothing. Just literally nothing. Right. It only changes what lists are possible. It doesn't actually and change. And even then, only around the very edges once in a while. Right. Uh, you, Correct. Which you guys have quibbled about this over the years. I mean, from a list building standpoint, I'm, I'm probably more in Tom's camp on this, Vince. Yeah, here's my argument. Like I'll every, play... every 10 points matters to me in the list. It... Every, every point matters. Okay, here's my argument, Tyler. I'll challenge 80% of the <laughs> Warhammer players in the world yeah, yeah. to a 2,000 point match. I'll bring 1850. I'll win. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Bold That's statement. Bold That's quite, statement. Well, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> That's quite a statement. Because a statement it's the, the truth. Night, <laughs> All right. Like, don't pick me. Pick somebody who thinks even better. Do you, do you think Bill Souza could beat you with 1,800 they're, they're points against Probably. your 2,000 point army? You're absolutely Probably. right, he could. I'd give him a good game. Okay. Yes. And he could, you could, you could randomize his army. Yeah, yeah. Because the points don't actually matter that much. It's not that accurate of a guide. Often the last hundred points of your list are irrelevant. Hence, hence like where in my 1500 point list, I had 75 points floating for my mm -hmm. luminous list. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. The but again, the problem is is that regardless of what you think about my third points, if you think all two thousand points super matter every time, sure, there's not people out there winning tournaments with nineteen forty point lists angling for triumphs. That doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your nineteen forty point giant list that you you just pointed out will never go five zero. Okay, like obviously the points are an indelicate measure of a, sure. a general representation of raw power. Obviously. Okay. My my point is that it yeah we're we're kind of I think talking about different strata here. Like the more the more basic point is that points on the margin can matter. Sure, once in a while you move something ten impact. points, it'll turn a two thousand five yeah. point list. Like somebody said, they went and calced, and currently yeah. Kragnos plus the Frost Lord on Stonehorn plus three monster trucks is two thousand five points apparently. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So okay, right. Cool. One of those guys, like the Frost Lord of Stonehorn, drops five points. Maybe that's a meaningful thing simply because it accidentally allowed a list in. I'm not going to say it's, you know, every time oh. irrelevant. Sure, on the margins once in a while, it can, like, tick a list that was invalid yeah. into valid territory. Yes. Fine. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Like, let me just say that this, like, the changes to Night Haunt uh, made one of my lists valid. Mm -hmm. Like that I've been looking at for a while, sure. and I'm like, I just need five more points, right. and this and this change here because the black coach me... did it for you, yes. Or well, no, and Reichnor, both Reichnor and Black Coach, so it gave me forty points. Yeah, um, yeah. which is like that. I mean, that's a meaningful swing. Yeah. Now, yeah. Nagash is there, so that whole list is off the table because I'm going to take Nagash. But mm -hmm. yeah, let me return to my point too, though, because I really want to drill this in. The difference between this being mathematically correct and functionally wrong, what I mean yep. there is, if Sentinels go to 170, okay, yep. how many points did the Sentinel list actually go up? I think Jack said his list was, yeah, okay. yeah, but, yeah. Well, like Jack's list went up 100 points. 100 points, yeah. yeah she yeah. takes five yeah. units of them, right? So, like, again, we need to think about this in different ways. Singleton yeah. heroes or singleton monsters or something like that, moving 10 points is largely irrelevant because it's 10 points and 2,000 points. A base right. unit moving 20 points that you're going to replicate five times is 100 points. It's not 20 points. Yeah, right. Right. Right? It could be a big deal. Again, like if you took, uh, I don't know, like you mentioned Volkites and that not happening. I mean, whatever, whatever with Volkites, right? 
But my mm. point is, like, if Volkites or, or Hearthguard Berserkers or something like that, that it, especially in an army like that, that you're going to tend to take a lot of. Maybe you don't take Volkites anymore, but you get what it... Let's assume Volkites scroll was actually worth anything, right? Mm. That that going down or up 10 points can actually math out to be quite a bit of movement in the list. Because you do get to a point here. Like, if you move a list 100 points in one direction or another, despite my previous argument, like, that does... You're, you're adding units. ...move the needle. Right. 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 And so, so how many so how many units are actually on this sheet that are going to be taken in mul multiples? Uh, most of the things that like a lot of the things that went up, okay, are Iron Drake, multiples. Blood stalkers, yes, sentinels, uh, sentinels, right, sentinels, Sal salamanders. Mm -hmm. Technically, uh, maybe sky wardens. Sure, I'll give you that. Black knights. Black Knights. No, I mean that's, that's horrific. Uh, that's, that, was, that was for comedy. <laughs> but but can, can yes, we talk about crypt ghouls? Sure, crypt ghouls yeah. going down to eighty five when we were talking about the the Morgant like horde mass body push. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get to the second page, which I think you'll actually oh. will see an impactful example of this, right? Yeah. Um. So my point is, I think when we when we do this, we need to couch out like what does the average army actually contain. What did this actually mean to the list? You know, right. you were never taking more than one Avalon or the Stoneheart King. So it's not that I don't appreciate sure. the 20 sure. points or whatever, right? Sure. But but Avalonor at 415 didn't suddenly, like, if he was unplayable, he didn't suddenly become playable at 395. Let's not kid ourselves. Right, right. No, 100%. Like you, yeah. you need at least a 10% swing in points in order for something to to be a meaningful change. Right, which is the fourth part of this, which is, like, there's a, there's a, a, a percentage representation here. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is how much did it move meaningfully against its base cost? And right. and what this ultimately should filter through in everybody's mind is that points are the worst way for all the problems we've just mentioned. Points are the worst, most indelicate. This is trying to nail a nail into your drywall with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yes. Right? Like, sure, you might get that nail in there. Right? You might also just bust your drywall, too. Mm. It's just an indelicate tool. The right tool is the War Scroll changes. Because ultimately, there's so many problems where they don't have... Where the thing does not fundamentally... It's either a bad scroll or no roll. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, what percentage of these points here are... Standing in front of bad war scrolls, are we talking about a high percentage? A lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. Battle Mage on yeah. Griffin, Brad Scroll, Brad Scroll, Dreadlord on Black Dragon, bad scroll, Sork on Black Dragon, bad scroll. We can argue about whether the Avatar of Cain is certainly, basically, the Rune Sun and the Doom Seeker. At least I'll give you those two. Um, Brock, probably regular Alarith. Light of Eltharion, like, uh, by the way, bad scroll or no roll. I'm going to count either of these, right? Sure, right. Light, you know, Light of Eltharion, let's let's up on that one. This uh, model has a ward of 5 plus playable. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Because I, feel, I still feel 220 is a little, is going to be too high for most Luminous players. Sure. When, yeah. when it has a, it's still, it's just a 3 Yes, up, because say. we cracked the code on these heroes when we made them for Stormcast. And they're like... Oh. Six to eight wounds. Sigvald, Stormcast, I'll do this correctly. They're like six to eight wounds, around 300 points, with a good armor save and a four up ward. Done. That's the model. Uh, yep. Now, so that's Jack him up 80 of, uh, points Altharian. and give him a four up ward or something, and we'll, then then you might see him. To be uh, fair, Light of Altharian can get a five up from Luminous spells. Sure. But you can't rely on a spell for that. Like, it has to be on their scroll. Especially for something that's like seeming that. to be a, want to be an independent operator, right? Yes. Now, you yes. know, maybe he has still has a problem of like having no actual role because he's not hammery enough to hammer or whatever. But blah 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 right. blah. Okay. Mm. Whatever. All right. Um. I like Gorgrunt. So let me talk about now the individual things that I think we're not that aren't right. None right. of the shooting units here that shoot mortal wounds went up enough. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, the twenty points that will increase is enough. Yeah, Ryan, real quick, I, I know Ryan's leaving. I didn't say that's the standard for heroes. I said that's the standard for those like super elite heroes. If you're trying to make an elite singleton named BA dude like Bastion Carthalos or Yandrasta or Sigvald, that's the level. That's what I'm saying. Not all heroes. No, God, no. Yeah, you look. You load them up with abilities. You give them a four. Uh, you know, like you they're give around three hundred points. Four. They have a ward and they're survivable. Yep. A clear roll. They have a ward and they're survivable. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, okay. None of the shoot like Iron Drake's probably fine. I would have put him at like one seventy five. I think is what we said originally, but fine. I, I don't think they're like the big awful thing in the meta because they're not. They're not doing mortal wounds. But Bloodstalkers should still be up higher if we're not going to kill the if we're not going to kill the hero phase shooting, which is what yeah. we should do. Yeah. Well, Morathi will get an updated War Scroll at some point, and when she does, she'll lose her command ability. Then this is a, then I'm fine with this points value, right? That's what needs to happen. Like, right? Hero phase shooting needs to go hard, uh, and and like, but until then, you gotta figure in the points for these guys. Like, yeah. Bloodstalkers, still too cheap. Salamander hunting packs, still too cheap. Sentinels, still too cheap. Sorry to say. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, wolves flying out. Part of the problem with the cheap. Sentinels, though, is that they didn't actually fix the line of sight, like the other issues that the Sentinels have. Completely agreed. I am assuming if we're not going to do the change we should do, which is fix the War Scrolls and fix the, the associated abilities that are making these things broken. Right. That's what we right. should do. Accepted point, right? Okay. So if that's the case, if we're not going to do that, we've just shown time and time again we're resistant to that, then you better jack the points on this stuff way up. That's your only other tool. That's the, like, you said, I'm not allowed to use a screwdriver. I'm not allowed to use anything else. You left me a hammer in the toolbox. Well, then I'm going to hammer in the morning and hammer in the evening. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that the dank hold troll frog boss is down to 240 and he started at like 300? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, I know Sentinels don't hero face shoot. Sentinels have a whole mix, mix of other problems. If they're not going to fix their line of sight shooting 30 inch loft lambent light nonsense, like you can pick the thing. Each of these have some associated thing that makes them a nightmare. That's that's the the thing I walked through earlier, right? Mortal wound mm. shooting is bad. Mortal wound shooting at long range is worse. Mortal wound shooting at double tapping or without line of sight or 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 with reroll hits or whatever is poison. Right. All of those units right. cross over into poison in some way. Right. Right. They should just be up higher. Like if we're gonna have them with this level of functionality, then they need to be expensive as. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, makes sense. So you wanted to talk about piggies. Yeah, piggies didn't go up enough. Uh, the yeah. right answer, again, was to roll back. This time you don't even have to change the scroll. Just yeah. delete, strike through your previous FAQ. Reset the rend on the jagged uh, gore hackers yeah. down to neg one where it should be. So we have three distinct rolls and three distinct units that to do those three distinct rolls in the army. And then basically you could move them up slightly. Maybe this is the right points cost. Maybe you could even put them at 160 or something. Well, we yeah, we discussed, I think you have to have at least a 20 point separation between brutes and these. Agree. Maybe right now, yeah, it's very 20. hard to pick brutes over these guys. Yeah, brutes are still stuck at 160. Yeah, yeah. so it's like, it's not a hard choice for the most part. Yeah. No, I'd say it's... It, Point well taken. Yeah, looking at this list, you know, in terms of the the, the rubric you mentioned a little bit ago, uh, yeah, there's a lot of junk <laughs> here, and it's not going to be impacted by point changes. So, I want to take a minute to answer a couple of quick questions. Adam said, if you had to make a new shooting centric army, how would you balance it? Uh, I would make mm -hmm. it so they want to get into combat to be effective and have them actually be able to survive in that place. Like have them be short range shooting and have lots of advantages when they're shooting up close and give them the durability to actually play in that a little bit in some way. Uh, mm -hmm. Tyler S., how would you fix non-elite heroes like a loon boss? I don't know that they need a huge amount of fixing. If you mean like the loon boss on Mangler Squig, I think it's fine. I think the underlying problems of an all-squig army are that it's an all-squig army with a low save. <laughs> um, and your troops are basically garbage. I mean, no offense, squigs are cool. I love them. They're some of the most adorable models ever, but, you know, there's fundamental challenges there. 
And then assistant ref, which I absolutely agree with, said most disappointing thing about the balance scroll is that heart render didn't change its red value. I agree. Nor did the Sylvaneth <laughs> trees change again. I feel like they really missed a trick there. All right. Uh, yeah, that's sort of my thing there. But I mean, you know, um, the crypt goals, like things that I thought were actually interesting were like the crypt goals going down 10. I agree with you, Tom, is actually could could be an interesting thing in that army. Um, I mean, gluttons going down 10 is insulting. I Again, their issue is fundamental coherency. That's all you need to do to change to make them like pseudo interesting. Yeah, but whatever. Um, the, I thought Ragnar dropping to 145 was interesting because I yeah. well, I thought I felt like he was a deal at 165. I agree. Yeah, totally. Dude. Ragnar's yeah. drop is, is actually pretty surprising. That's that's odd. Um, yeah, Kurt Hawk, odd they just need to fix his attack number. He needs to have like mm -hmm. eight attacks or something. Um, <laughs> he's just he's not doing enough work. Sure. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that just. It felt like a pretty incoherent process in terms of the, this points update. Like when yeah, I look like at this, these I neg tens really... and neg fives on most of this is just completely doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guard of steel soul going. I mean, that was the oddest one. Well, uh, hold on. Guard let's let's jump to that. Uh, or wait, was that? Yeah, let's jump to that page. <laughs> that so let's look at page two. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, the boc <laughs> stuff is exactly what I'm talking about, right? Like, oh, you move yeah. the dragon ogre shagoth down thirty points. Cool. Like, okay, now you're right. You know, beasts are saved now. Like, those are big moves on Bulgors going down 25 points. Dragon Ogres going down 25 points. And, like, I'm sure there's somebody right now who's thinking about, uh, you know, like a Dragon Ogre spam army. Okay? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I think Domus was literally building that at one Yeah, point. sure. But, I mean, like, mm -hmm. the... It's just, like, again, the fundamentals are, are bad there. Right. right. So right. you can't, even with big points moves like that, it's not going to do anything. So, right. like, Bulgors still have all the same fundamental issues at 130 they had at 155. 130 is certainly a more reasonable number for them, but it's not like suddenly they're going to be different. Yeah. Mm. Uh, my favorite change on this page was the move of Chaos Chariots from Down 105 to 100. <laughs> Fine. I like Chaos Chariots. I think they're pretty good. I enjoy them. So I just read that and I'm like, so tell me the logic here. Sure. What sure. was that five points doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he is. Look, Domus is in the chat. He said it's built and painted. That army's ready to go. What's up, Domus? How you doing, brother? Nice. Uh, some, of, some of these feel quite clear. Like, I love the Chaos Horse Lord coming up 20. 135 sure. yep. you know it definitely yep. feels like he should be one not enough but good right direction yeah it's it's a yeah yeah i don't know i just i do find it interesting that i mean some of these feel quite clear to me what they should be and then many of them don't and so like it, i mean it does maybe it is harder than it seems but it, it does get into just and again your war scroll and your roll point like I, I that's probably often what it is like with the chaos or Lord, i can look at that thing and be like 115 is absurd for what that thing's doing relative to the baseline sort of sure. of the ecosystem and so and to kind of quickly get a sense of it, like 135 145 feels about right for what it for what it is but yeah so here's what i'll say let's take the chaos yeah. sorcerer lord he's a good example yeah i'm gonna wave a magic wand you ready tyler mm. the chaos sorcerer lord's now 175 points yeah okay does he still show up in a lot of armies probably does yep. yeah 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 because that reroll saves is a really big deal because auto uh, reroll saves one, plus one save now but re -roll or, yeah auto plus wins. one saves right thank you and yeah. auto or and demonic power a spell yeah. right right are both super good yeah and do something okay yeah, yeah. uh yes dear it is but that's fine <clears throat> I like where these uh, these Zangor numbers are going. Yeah, like, the, the interesting changes to me here are, first of all, I love Corgus Cole going down 15. That's hilarious to me that, like, I love Corgus Cole. I want him to, I love his, his silly ability to pile in eight inches is, like, one of the coolest things in the world. So just make that dude cheap enough that people just sort of accidentally splash him in armies for fun. 
right? I mean, we talked about corn being in a rough place. Again, <laughs> with doing what happened to corn, it's not like some points changes of this minimal amount, like Skull right. Reaper's going down 10, Wrath Longer's going down 10. It's not, that's not moving the needle, folks. Um, Zangor's going down 20 and the Shaman going down 25 is actually interesting, I suppose. I don't know if it's enough. Um, mm -hmm. But it's interesting. Not, Could be. It's not, but... Uh... But they have my attention. Sure. You know, again, Zangor's problem is they do need a new scroll that's not nonsense um, to mm -hmm. compensate for their sort of base size challenges, but they are they could be fun. Um, yeah. The Slanesh changes are just comical at best. Um, what, you don't like Bliss Barb at 170? Bliss Barb, we, that's coming in a second. Don't worry, Tom. That's I know what we're is. ending on. Um, I mean, obviously the Bliss Barb thing is stupid. The only thing, like, Slangor Fiend Bloods get out of here. Neg 20. They could be, they could have said Neg 100. I wouldn't take them. Um, mm -hmm. this, the only one in that whole list from Slanesh that's interesting to me is Simranesh Twin Souls, which I do think could have a valid role in the Slanesh army, being like a relatively fast, interesting unit that's multi damage. Yeah. Right. Um, and they were obviously overcosted. Like 165 is getting down to a point where you you could see them, like because they're yeah. optional battle line. They actually have multi damage. They actually still have a reroll to hits built into their war mm -hmm. scroll in the current rules. So yeah. given they can only use it either on turn two and four or turns one, three, and five, depending on a completely forced and stupid mechanic, but it's there. Mm. You know, I mean. But Plague Claw. Plague Claw and Plague Priest <laughs> uh, the, on Furnace doesn't matter. The, the, you're never going to have more than one Plague Priest on a Furnace, and 10 points is irrelevant to a Skaven list. But Night Runner's going down 10 to 75. <laughs> we are getting into ridiculous territory now. Like, mm. where you're getting down to spamming ridiculous Night Runners. Like, this is in <laughs> dangerously low point territory, where people like Smorgan are like, yes, yes. Where you're so just... there, is that that's seventy five or ten, right? Yeah, seventy five or ten. Yeah. So you're telling me that I can have a hundred of them, two two hundred of them for fifteen hundred points. Correct. It's but they all get a pregame move, by the way. <laughs> so you can they just all attack, right just flood. They all have a range flood, the, attack, flood right? the zone. Yes. So, anyways, that's funny. Uh, things in the Stormcast. I was happy to see Aventus go down. I think Aventus was strong. I think he was slightly overcosted at 310. That feels good. I cannot believe Gardas went down. That is shocking to me. Gardas was such a steal at 160. Yeah. Putting that's... him at 100. Like, him going down is insane. It's I'm insane. Yeah. Only I mean, the people. Again, that's me. Like, when I saw that it's like what that, that's like the leading indicator i don't know I'm, I'm i'm going on about this it just that was a leading indicator of like a lack of coherency around sure. this page it's like what like if we're starting with dropping guards we just see, seemingly are truly throwing darts anyway i know they get that uh they, they hear that a lot but anyway yeah guard uh, is chad yeah. soul i agree he's uh he's a beast <laughs> he's a beast i don't tell anyone, but I'd pay 200 for him. <laughs> so, sure. like, him being 150. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I'm a buyer. Test, yeah. I test games with him and what he does. I mean, he, he does what you would expect. Uh, just a five-up ward on your entire army. Yeah, that's that's amazing, turns out. Yeah, Aventus is cool. Uh, I'm a little surprised he went down, but, yeah, he's he's quite awesome. Uh, the... Sylvaneth, we got a little bit of a drop. Didn't get the Kurnoth. Been a little bit on the Kurnoth, but again, I think Sylvaneth are an example of where it's going to make a difference. Uh, writing list with some other players over the last 24 hours, it is actually opening up more space for interesting lists. You know, if you're running some of these big trees. I think it. I, I, here's what I'll say. Shh, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, <laughs> sure, maybe it opens up a list that was slightly over before. Sure. Like, yeah, because you're ancient and dirty and stuff like that. Like, it, like it has Double no song. fundamental impact on the army Sylvaneth can put on the table and their fundamental competitiveness. If you got half a percentage point of win rate out of this, I'd be shocked. Yeah. I, I Yeah, it's not much, but I, I would I'd happily bet a half a percent. Sure. 
Like, okay. <laughs> you know, like, is that, that's, that's not what they need right now is being the point, right? Yeah, they're, yeah, a little, they probably could use a little bit more help. I don't know. They're a, they're a fascinating army. I, I just started picking them up again and, and getting some test games in with, yeah, and kind of getting a feel for how they are, actually trying out the Mortal Wound Bomb. The Mortal Wound Bomb, I mean, they, they feel like an army that, yeah, in the hands of experienced players can punch, you can punch well above your weight class. But I mean, that gets back to other variables. Like, you know, a lot of players are capable of taking about anything and doing, you know, getting quite a, good, quite a bit of gas out of the tank with those armies. So like, yeah, Math Mallow was tearing up the scene uh, with with Simoneth this year, and but m- most players were not doing that well. Sure. So anyway, like I, I I get all that, but the Chaos War Shrine stands out as the one that I really like. Like they they got it, I think exactly correct. Like plus mm. thirty points is exactly it's what should really happen. good. That's yeah, it's correct. Good. You yeah. got it. That's how yeah. much that thing should be. Right. Yep. Okay. There is a war scroll that's missing from this. Uh, uh, well, there's probably a number. couple, but yeah, like let's. <laughs> yeah. Um, Archeon went up thirty. Fine, who cares? Go trek up fifty. Yes, correct. Again, I actually quite like that. He was he was ridiculously too stupid. Cheap you will suddenly time. not see him in any lists. He wasn't right. super competitive before. That's right. not the issue. Yeah. He was simply too cheap for what he accomplished. Being in, when a lot of people talk about this. They talk about it like, oh, if it's not showing up in competitive lists, it's not a problem. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. That is an incorrect measure. Okay? Like, that can be a bellwether. Sure. But that is not the measure of this. Mm -hmm. Gotrek was simply too good for what he did at his points and was horrible for casual players. This is closer to his correct point value. That is all. <laughs> that is the point. Being part of a 5-0 list or not does not suddenly is not that is not the gate mechanism for whether or not you deserve points adjustments. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's part of that. We've talked that's part of the challenge with a lot of these conversations. Yeah, is that we're we're just operating in different magisteria. We're operating in different realms often with these discussions. Right. And 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 you know, and to be fair, like I'm sure at times in our in the show we haven't always been consistent in trying to, you know, making clear what are our initial sort of assumptions and values, you know, like where are we starting from? Oh, Tyler, from? don't worry. I've been 100% <laughs> consistent every moment of every day. I'm baby. sure you have. I'm so, consistency yeah. in 10 cities over here. Can we talk about the 15 point, adju- point adjustment to Nagash? Is your goal to slowly get farther from your mic, Tom? Is that what it is? I'm just falling asleep, and so I'm sure. sliding back slowly. <laughs> um, like, can we talk about the 15 point adjustment to Nagash? Sure. Like, what is the approximate two one point seven five percent change right. to his points accomplishing? Yes, nothing, nothing. Mm. It'd be like if you walked into your basement and it was flooded, okay, yep. and you grabbed a single bucket from your garage and just went in and were like, "Swoop," and we're like, and you're like "Got like, it, fixed, done." That's what you just did. So, okay. Yeah, I can't believe Kairos isn't on this list. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. He's my he's he's who I absolutely expected to see and did not see. I'm surprised long strikes weren't on this list. I'm yep. surprised fulminators weren't on this list. Yeah, seriously. You know, I where are fulminators? Well, from I an mean, internal balance standpoint, obviously they should have been like some or concussors, desolators. Yeah, sure. Or the other one's going down or something, whatever. Yeah. To go down, yeah. I think like I would be more comfortable saying that fulminators, as time passes, will be more reflective of evocators and sequiturs than long strikes. Meaning that long strikes probably did need to tick up, but not necessarily fulminators. I know is a weird thing to say. Uh, but anyway, we we could get into the details of why I think that's the case. But I'm surprised they weren't here, regardless of yeah. the, the the truth of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, overall, to me, the points were the disapp- the, the disappointing part of this. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple good ones in here. I think that directionally, stuff like sentinels and and all those things went the right direction. They just didn't go far enough. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. 
I, and I think I a lot of the that. points down yeah. often don't matter. I think 25% of the points down here at most, at most, I'll be generous, matter. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, there's... Most uh, of these are just deck chairs on the Titanic. Sure. Corn, uh, we, we talked on the Wishlist show, Corn Demon Prince with What's the Ground. Again, at least from a, a, an internal balance standpoint, you've got to increase the points on that thing. Yeah, it's you're insane that he's the same cost as like the Slanesh one. That's comical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, and then, yes, 170 point units. Let's look at our comparison here. Gorgrunta's 170, Sentinel's 170, Bliss Barb Archer's 170. Completely logical. Sure. <laughs> These are all definitely 170 point units. Yeah. And, you know, I generally chafe against inter army comparison because it's not really mm -hmm. fair. And I've talked about all the reasons why it's not fair to compare points across armies in the past. You know, an sure. all melee army who has no shooting or no magic or whatever should get you, good melee units cheaper than an army that. You should have had stars. Iron Freaks. I didn't make the gold. meme. So somebody else made this meme. Okay. I totally stole this Got from it. Twitter. Got it. But I loved it so much. So very, very much. So whoever you were that made this meme, you're my hero. <laughs> um, yeah, could have been Iron Drakes too, sure, because they're also 170. Like, it's, yes. Well, and they're shooting. Like, we're yeah, talking yeah. about shooting units, right? Sure. Um, but what are our final like thoughts? Going forward... How do we want to see this? Let's let's talk the future, okay? Just to get it out, gut rippers, uh, pull one out for gut rippers, staying at one whatever the hell they are right now, and not going down points. Sure. Like it's just a number of things like that that seem uh, there was a lot of that that seemed kind of obvious things that that should have been in here, but whatever. What's the future? Should these be quarterly? Let's start with that question. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we got one vote. Yes, Tom. I just don't think I don't I don't think that I don't think that I'm gonna pull a, a GW marketing line here. I don't think we have enough data for quarterly updates. Okay, all right. Because, like, I don't think that we can actually, like, I don't think that they can receive data, process it amongst testers. And then test alternate things every three months. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a challenge, right? Because you got to consider there's a lot of work. Like, they're not winging this. Right. Hopefully. Like, because ideally, like, you're talking about a, a three-month turnaround where they implement the new points change or ability change. And then they have to begin measuring data from that point. So it's not like they can roll out a change and then be start testing for the, like in the future, like they need to roll that out. And then let's say that you're going to look at a month of events on the other side of those changes and then a month of testing. Right. Yeah. And then the internal processes to, of a month turnaround to create these documents. Yeah. You could, you could have a lag time though, Tom, where it, meaning that, you could still more or less be operating on a six month time frame within that regard. So meaning, okay, we had the balance data slate come out for 40 K they're going to have this window. They've committed to quarterly changes, right? 40 K sure. they're on the books. Okay. So we just had our first balance data slate. So they're going to have three months here. Is it likely that the next balance data slate is going to be reflective of just that three month window? Or is it more likely that it's going to be kind of reflective of a longer time horizon? Me meaning well, that I think they could. The challenge you're going to have there, though, Tyler, and it's a very real one, yeah. is that like their, their internal testing and their pool of testers is not large enough to like to get the stress test that you need to actually see the consequences of their data the consequences yeah. of the changes they need to get it out into the public so that we can get thousands of iterations in that month hypothetically yeah. Yeah. now the problem is is that like 
if we're only evaluating events, events are even a small portion of the actual stress that's going on. And then how many people are actually giving feedback appropriately and yada, yada, yada. Right. And so like, I just, I don't think that we can, I don't think that in that month to two month window that we can actually like reasonably expect to get the data that we need. Mm. And then, and then, and then come up with solutions and push that to testers to test it before it then hits the market again. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just, I think three months is yeah, way no, too fast of a turnaround. Seems like very fair point. points. Yeah. Like from yeah. a development standpoint, like you have to think about the processes that are going to lead to these changes and the processes yeah. themselves. I just don't think you can get that done in three months. I think part of my baseline sort of assumptions has been. I, I, I would be curious your guys' views on to what degree you see what we just got as more reflective of incremental changes sort of within the space of evolution versus, you know, more significant changes, let's say, sort of where do you think this falls on the spectrum? I think it tends to fall firmly within the incremental evolutionary, um, you know, side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And to what degree do I think that quarterly changes with that orientation would work I'm generally fairly comfortable with that but but I, i'm taking your points and there and the other the, so there's some asterisks that go along with this one of which is i don't like have a clear sense of let's take suns suns were dominating early on you know and then we've seen this downward trend for various reasons we, so we have we have these natural quote unquote adjustments that take place right new variables get entered people adjust blah 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 you know, how do we have a, to what degree can we predict that having more time for that will lead to better results versus having less time for that to take place will lead to more likely worse results because you might overreact to that short, which I kind of feel is a little bit about what you're saying there, Tom, is that, you know, you might get a misleading, I'll, I'll shut up, but is that along the lines of what you're saying? You think take sons like would you have expected that yeah go ahead no I, the answer is like with sons i don't know what the solution is there that's short of a book rewrite mm -hmm. sure and the question is what oh. is this six plus what does the amulet of destiny change to them what does heroic recovery do to them you know what do these right. various things do i don't know what the answer is to collect that data properly you'd have to now operate in this new space Right? Yeah, right. Does it have a meaningful impact? Okay. Well, then we're not going to be able to collect that data and then make another change. Like, yes, you could sort of like flip flop where you're not touching those things, but ultimately, yeah. then you've got to consider that there are also books coming out in there. It's not a static environment, sure, right? right? We're going to have a new GHB that's going to completely alter theoretically the the state of play. Yep. Right. In the and middle the scenarios of and the realm right. that we're in and yada 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 potentially. And so, to me, look, I don't like you could you could sort of try to have different elements only being touched like here we only touch yeah. this stuff here we only touch this stuff and then do it quarterly maybe you could make that work okay but it's still going to be challenging because that's still a big load of work of people trying to operate and understand the space and it's not like those things are so easily separable there's often knock-on consequences sure like game rules yeah. are a big tangled web so you know we can sort of say oh we won't touch these things again Right. We'll touch different things next time, but let's not pretend like these things aren't intermingled in some right. fashion. Right. Yep. It's not like like having a five up save in combat didn't matter at all in twenty nineteen. Mm hmm It didn't matter. Because yeah. everybody who most of the people running around winning had like a five up save. They would hit you and just explode you and kill you. Mm -hmm. So the right. fact they had a low armor save didn't matter at all. Right? right and the the uh the reality is though it's very important now now it's the most important thing in the world any unit with basically a five up save is almost dead in the water almost to a man now mm -hmm. yep. you know assuming they're not some ultra powerful shooting unit okay because the the, the underlying stuff know. changes as well there's nothing to do they never they never made a rule it was somehow changing. That was just everything else changed around them, right? Right. I mean, the right answer here, and I'll stand behind this, is 
six month increments with better work on the initial books, like put in the extra development work on the initial books. That's the platonic mm. ideal. Right? That's where we'd yeah. want to live. Yeah. Where we'd want to live is higher quality on the initial product, so less need to change so often. On the back end, yeah. On the back end. Yeah. And the six month updates are the incremental things we need. Right? Yeah. Like that's right? Isn't that the right answer? Yep. Okay, so that's yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and 3.0 books, generally, in my view, were on a positive trend for the most part. I mean, you know, like, again, at the, we can quibble about a lot of different point values. We didn't talk about, you know, the long laundry list of Stormcast War Scrolls that are not getting played right now because they're under they're overcosted. But, yeah, like, you can you can make some adjustments to those things. But, yeah, generally, these books are have been great so far, in my view. Yeah. I will say this. If we were going to do quarterly, I'm not sure I'd really want points touched every quarter. If we're going to do mm. incremental quarterly adjustments, if this ends up being the, the path, if we are, if we do end up quarterly, I'm not sure I'd really want points touched because I just think points is, it's a bad way to fix things for all the reasons we talked about. It's not doing enough. It's not doing a lot of work. Mm. Don't do it. Do it every six months. Do one in the winter yep. and one in the GHB or whatever, GHB time frame. And focus your quarterly incremental updates on, on rules issues. Yep. Yeah. Right. So if we if we can't live in the, the platonic ideal, if that's impossible, then where I want to live is in a world where I'm not where we're not bouncing points around in lists every three months because that just sounds awful. <laughs> oh my list, I, because oftentimes you're planning for tournaments three months in advance. Yeah. Right. 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 I started planning for Night Haunt back in September. Right. I mean. You know, even six months with, with bouncing points around can be problematic, but every three months, like, geez, oh, Pete's, man. I, you, you oftentimes, mm -hmm. most people, I think, kind of say, yeah, I'm going to go to this tournament. It's about three months away. What a terrible thing. You've got, like, your 1990-point list. The points changes come out, let's say, three weeks beforehand, enough that certainly the tournament's going to use them. Sure. And your list is now 2,060. You're like... Yep. Okay. That's just man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've appreciated the discussion on points. I, I definitely feel like I've had my mind changed and sort of open to a more a better perspective on this. Yeah, I, I like what you're selling yeah. on, on the points. What I'd much rather see them do here, if we're going to do these quarterly adjustments, is yeah. give those nudges to things either through new war scrolls like they did here with the three main people, or something like that. Mm. right or, or touch a couple core rules that are sh that are being problematic like if we, if we got another one in three months and the fix the stuff that was there was no more points adjustments in in i don't know end of march or something i don't know whatever like you know whatever it would be and it wasn't like points adjustments but instead they fixed coherency right mm. and maybe addressed a couple other small issues like that in the core stuff Okay, cool, yeah. good stuff. Flow that through to the app, and I'm a happy camper. Mm -hmm. Right, great. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Right. I just I I fear the bouncy world because if they start quarterly right. adjusting things too, the other problem is you could get in like increment can build speed. What if next time Bulgore come down ten, and then after that they they're still not good enough. Okay, now they come down another ten. Now we're down to 110 points. And then the book comes out. So now you have so so finally maybe they hit a number where people feel like spamming them is fun. So people go out and buy a yeah. ton of Bulgore. And then the book comes out. And they make Bulgore actually hit like they should or be like as good as they should. Right. And Bulgore is suddenly two hundred points. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what what have we been doing this year? Right. Sure. Right. When like that's not what beasts need. What beasts need is an update to the herdstone so it starts at a bigger radius or something like that, right? right. That's that's the right. kind of stuff mm -hmm. they should be doing. Like put out a new herd score, stone war scroll that's not garbage. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, I believe with that 40k data slate, they were not making point adjustments to a lot of different factions. You know, they I think they had a, a more constrained set of factions. Yeah, it was they, on the two bad boys. Add right. Drukari. Back in Drakari, yeah, but, but that so, 
Yeah, the just overall the that balance data slate as you started from the top and you know we went through like it would have been it feels like it would have been better to have these here's a new rule for gets for you know these lower tier factions and point adjustments for or and or war scroll changes yada 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 for the top tier to bring things more in line with the middle. Yeah, that that generally feels like a better approach than sort of this shot what felt like a shotgun approach to these point adjustments that are largely not gonna have much of an impact. So yeah. Yep. You know, I mean the um I I worry about the flux syndrome of like things being in constant change and how people react yeah. to that. You will lose like people don't like that. There's a there's a good cadre oh, yeah. of folks who if they feel like the game if the ground underneath them is really unsteady, they will just get off the train. Yeah. Yep. And I always fear that. Now, at the same time, you also can lose people if you don't make any tangible changes to the thing that they love. Mm -hmm. Both sides are risks. That's why I, you know, that's that's why I really do appreciate the work harder, more development work, higher quality initial project product, six month cycle of incremental adjustments. That's like yep. should be what we're aiming at. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's just reasonable, man. So, yeah. Okay, there we go. Cool. Well, cool. gentlemen, we did it. We yeah. fixed it. There it is. <laughs> uh, my my final thought is good stuff. You know, like it's fine. They they this is a good first shot across the bow. There are things mm -hmm. in here I like very much. There are more things I could see to do. I will yep. be very. In, I'm not going to judge them too harshly on the first one. Like, yep. First one, there was some good stuff in here. They had some smart changes to some things. I like what was done with yeah. a lot of stuff. I think there's certainly a lot more that can be done. And I am keen to uh, see where this goes in the future. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. Tyler, Tom, thank you guys. Good stuff tonight. Yeah, totally. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. I hope everybody has time away from work or something, gets to relax a little here or there, spend time with your family, with Kith and Kin next to a warm mm -hmm. fire drinking eggnog or something if you want to that disgusting <laughs> warm soup uh it's gross um or cold soup or i don't even know how you drink eggnog it's disgusting either way okay so uh the i hope everybody has a wonderful time i hope everybody has a wonderful holiday or at least if, if you don't celebrate anything here then a wonderful last couple weeks of december uh we'll be back next week of course as always don't forget to hit like if you didn't uh, Gersey said, was this the winter FAQ or the balance update? Both. They ended up rolling both of them together. They did update some of the FAQs. Um, this was the shooting match. So, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Don't forget to hit like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click all those important buttons. But as always, we'll see you next Wednesday.